It is that time again, isn't it, Chef? We're ready for some Mortal Kombat 11 action here for PlayStation tournaments. This one being the FGC Arcade Road to Evo Edition. Evo is soon upon us in the fighting game community, the biggest tournament in the world of which Mortal Kombat 11 is a major part of. This tournament that we're going to be seeing today, a showcase of the finest European talent. And if you enjoyed today's show, after Europe, we're going to be jumping into North America. So, Chef, lots of Mortal Kombat to get through, let alone this weekend, which has a lot of people <laughs> grinding the new game. I mean, it's Mortal Kombat fever, I think. It is. I think we're kind of like coming to a head here with uh, just the whole, uh, not, I mean, not just this game, kind of a lot of fighting games in general, but especially with Mortal Kombat, you know, the, the uh, to me, the, the, the new game stress test did make me kind of realize like, wow, this is kind of near the end of MK11's life. Like these stakes today in the tournament, of course, you know, getting that care package to help you go to Evo, that's huge because this is most likely, obviously I have no idea, but I would have to guess most likely the last MK11 Evo. And then of course, at least the last one before mk1 releases so this is honestly pretty huge it is it's it's all about for me i think at this point giving mortal kombat 11 that that wonderful final push mm -hmm. because times are about to change the next chapter in the competitive history of mortal kombat is about to be opened and mortal kombat 11 has been a major part of that for the last four years today's show is going to be a wonderful showcase of just the finest talent in europe and of north america with worthy players absolutely getting that opportunity to perhaps make it out and do some damage, right? Now, there's a few things for us to get through while we set up our first match. The first thing being, uh, there is a one-stop shop now in place for anybody that wants to know more about competitive PlayStation. It's all done through PlayStation Esports. You can look at the bottom of the screen in front of you to see where to go. It's just a youtube.com forward slash PlayStation Esports. Simple as that. Player interviews, strategies, all sorts of competitive footage. I mean, look, if you like competitive PlayStation, check it out. It has everything you possibly need to know. That's right. That is now the greatest place to go. And definitely, again, with everything kind of coming to a head here with Evo with MK1 coming out, it's definitely going to be a spot that you're going to want to check out. But of course, we can look forward to today's tournament. Of course, the uh, format is going to be just a little bit different for anybody who maybe has been watching the fight nights. The big difference here is that it is going to be best of five the entire way through. But if you're not familiar with it at all, it is open qualifiers leading to this top eight. It is a double elimination bracket. Like I mentioned, best of five all the way through. A little bit more games to uh, get that adaptation. And then the grand finals, of course, as a double elimination bracket. You can get the bracket reset. So we'll see who can make it there and if they can make that actually happen. But the stakes today, like I mentioned, they're higher than ever before. They are. And it all comes down to the prizing. So second place, $200. Third, $400. And then fifth between eighth for the 50 the important thing to point out is that first place evo hospitality package that is going to make it so much easier for our winner to attend evo this year to represent themselves europe wherever in mortal kombat 11 and with the players that we have in today's bracket any one of them could take it and any one of them in my opinion would absolutely have a chance at making top eight at evolution so you can see here it's going to be omi versus uh golly in that first matchup matrix juna versus macaran after that starks and zippery going in for the third matchup and then sadly it's going to have to be the <laughs> twins going head to head in that first round h dope and k top so this is all winner's bracket whoever loses makes it into lower bracket where your final lifeline is there but keep this in mind folks three out of five all the way through three out of five is something that's become very standard for the mortal kombat scene across many years we saw it in injustice 2 as well but it lends itself chef more room to adapt and to get used to your opponent and i think maybe that's not necessarily as relevant here because if you've watched playstation tournaments over the last few years you'll kind of know at this point that a lot of the players we have in this top eight they fought each other countless times that three out of five is going to simply give them more room to think right what's not working at this exact moment rather than big changes like characters or whatever 
Yeah, honestly, I'm really excited because I would be really happy to see any of these players make it to EVO. Uh, of course, the trip from EU is a huge trip. Uh, yes. I'm sure you may have you may have experienced that a few times, uh, but the, uh, you know, a lot of these players haven't had the chance to make it to EVO, and I'm a huge fan of tons of these players. I mean, some of these players, like for example, like Macran or H Dope or K Top, they've been playing in these tournaments for such a long time, and I just love watching them all the time. There's players like Gollywomp we've even seen here for a good amount of time. There's players like Zipri who uh, I'd say is a little bit newer to the PlayStation tournaments, but I've seen them enough times that I absolutely would love to see them be able to compete, or like Starks, who we saw for the first time, or at least I saw for the first time in the last PlayStation broadcast. So everybody there, I am very excited to see. Now we're gonna be getting into our first match pretty much uh, as soon as, but while we do so, I wanna mention that you can go to compete.playstation.com. That's one of the main areas that you can find out all things competitive PlayStation, very similar to the PlayStation eSports. Compete.playstation.com is more just giving you all the information you need to actually get involved yourself. There are so much more things included in PlayStation tournaments that aren't just fighting games that if you enjoy your PlayStation system, this website will probably have something for you. Don't quote me on that, by no means, but <laughs> I'm just saying, look, check out the website. There's probably gonna be something to sink your teeth into. Outside of that, one final thing you can check out is the official Discord for PlayStation tournaments. And that is where you can chat with like-minded people. You can find out how to sign up to upcoming events. And also there are watch parties. If you wanna watch it with the community, you wanna tune into all the action with those that enjoy the show, well, Go and do the Discord, either by following the link that you can see on your stream or by scanning that QR code underneath. But, Chef, I think it's time to talk about our first matchup. Ooh, I'm excited. I really, I really, really am excited for today. Uh, like I mentioned, this is kind of the end of the road for the Road to EVO 2 as well. So we're going to see kind of our last player that is going to be making this. Of course, the end of the road, end of the road is going to be North America a little bit later, but uh, at least Europe starting off the day. And I am uh, very excited for every single one of our first round matchups today. So that, that means that probably I'm going to be excited for every single matchup throughout the course of today. Good problem uh, of to course. Have. Yeah, yeah, definitely a, a good problem overall. But um, our first one of the day, I actually I gotta remember which one was actually our first because I think that was the Gollywomp matchup. Uh, because yes. yeah, there we go. It's Omi, and I was curious about this. I see R I F in Omi's name, not a uh, not a tag that I'm used to seeing as we've seen Omi probably ten thousand times on these broadcasts. So maybe got picked up, which is pretty cool to see. But Omi, of course, a player with a bunch of different characters has the Sub Zero, has the Frost, has the Jade, has uh, I mean, honestly, there there have been a few others that we've seen a little bit, a little bit, teensy bit, but we're expecting definitely the three out of five, I think, to help Omi as their player who has used the character switches throughout a set very, very well over time. You really said it all there. Omi is the kind of player that a, a big thing in the competitive sense that gives him an edge is the existence of multiple characters. Now, in a three out of five setting, and as we had actually seen in our recent Fight Nights installment here for Mortal Kombat, Omi with extra games can often use that opportunity to change up and go mm -hmm. with a completely different game plan, a completely different matchup, and that can mean quite a lot. Now, do we think we're gonna see it here remains to be seen because his opponent is none other than Gollywomp. So this is a player that, for me, I have seen so much baraka over the mm -hmm. years that i see sub-zero in the graphic and obviously like I, i'm not 100 percent sure now to be fair i've actually not seen this player in some time so maybe there was a change made but when i look at this player i think of baraka and mm -hmm. the baraka variations that have often been really really good but ultimately eventually gollywomp will encounter a bad matchup and maybe that's <laughs> if there has been a character change that might have motivated that, you know? Right. Well, I did somewhat recently uh, get to watch a fight night with, I think it was me and Saki Sakura, and we saw Gollywomp using the Baraka as usual, so if it's a change, I think it's maybe a little bit more new. But again, you know, if there's a time to kind of have a secondary, this is probably about the time to have it. I and like Baraka, Baraka, like you mentioned. Like it. <laughs> hey, it is, I, I feel like we actually were talking about how kind of everybody can have a secondary Sub-Zero uh, kind of recently yeah. and how that might happen again in one. But um, yeah, the Sub-Zero always going to be 
be a really good backup character, right? There's a lot of characters that you may have some issues with. Like, for example, if we do end up seeing a Cetrion uh, later, we could see Sub-Zero be a pretty good answer to that. I mean, again, not a counter pick, but just an answer where you don't have to worry quite as much. And uh, we are going to see the Baraka to start things off. But the big question is what variation of Baraka? There are so many different ways that you can go with this character. Yeah, and I feel like it's it's smart that Ooh. Omi is going for the hidden cursor because uh, the thing about Gollywomp is he plays so many different variations of Baraka that some variations might be used for certain matchups, right? And if Omi is hiding mm -hmm. that information from you, uh, that first game could be uh, quite a game changer. So, by the way, shout out to that really cool looking Baraka. Uh, ah, it's Jackie, actually. And that's going <laughs> to yeah. be against a Baraka that does not have spine burst. So... That might have been one of the reasons Hidden Cursor was even locked in, because there's an element of me that thinks that Baraka would have used Spine Burst if you knew the opponent was Jackie, right? Like, that's just where my brain goes in this situation. Yo, nice hat. Yeah, that is a nice hat. That is actually sick. I don't think I've ever actually seen that one. But, uh, you know, I, I actually do think, maybe I'm wrong, but I think this was actually the first match in that fight night with Saki Sakura that I was talking about. And uh, this was the exact matchup that they ended up playing. So it's probably would make a lot of sense. We were talking about how the Spine Burst can work pretty well in this matchup. But if you don't have Spine Burst, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of manual options. I mean, there are some pretty good AA options from Baraka. The down two is pretty great. You can air to air. You can use, like, down four sometimes. Just some weirdness. But, yeah. Uh, Without spine burst, stuff like that can happen. Yeah, having to rely on just, just sheer individual buttons is going to be a little bit tricky here. I think there are some moves that we hit that we see here with Berserker that's going to allow Baraka to turn a couple of those hits, maybe into the, you know, the barrage or something else. Just going in for the flag now to try and make those projectiles do a bit of extra damage. Kind of respect that full screen blade <laughs> charge. I mean, if a hit on the furthest end that that's kind of then one touch of go territory for Baraka especially when the fatal blow is ready however Omi started off strong by just getting that rush down on deck and already now with the escape failed I mean it doesn't really mean anything for Jackie but it does suggest that you're looking at a certain direction right now here comes Jackie mm. even more of this infamous rush down at this point he's waiting for that forward two to whiff you've got to watch out on that forward two for Baraka and it's one of his most dangerous range buttons Oh yeah, and almost nobody has that range at, sorry, that speed at that range, essentially. Eight frames and that far, extremely good button. But uh, of course it is duckable. And right now we're seeing just so much patience. Right now, oh my gosh, okay, that is way too many projectiles to take. That was like four blade sparks just getting eaten by Omi. Oh, that's gonna be huge. That's a life lead, which is honestly just a gigantic thing right now. That's gonna be more than a life lead. Oh, chose not to break away. So that's gonna be it. Of course, if there was a breakaway and then there was a blade charge then that would have been it as well. So it was a mix up. I do like this variation this is all basically almost exactly Barack Zerker which is pretty cool uh but right now it's uh, it's doing okay I got corner positioning the question is Jeff how long is that gonna last and well I guess maybe that's the <laughs> yeah. answer if that combo connected then there would have been uh, maybe something slightly different but it is that instant damage that these specials can give Baraka. You know, it's not going to give him the highest damage in the game, but it's going to be nice and reliable. Now, sadly, as we're talking about that, a lot more of the damage is going in the opposite direction. Because just now, Baraka knocked on the floor, goop on the floor. You don't have to deal with any of that, but Jackie's going to force you to. There's that forward two again. Any amount of that damage on the floor is going to be good. But yeah, the grab game starts to expand. And this is something you see a lot. We're not going to be able to see really anything else, though, because all it takes is a little bit of plasma here, and Baraka's done. So, I mean, yeah, what do you do? What do you do in this situation? If the forward 2-1 hit Chef, Baraka would have moved forward. If Baraka moved forward, Baraka lost the game. It actually looked a little bit there, like, it kind of just walked into it. Maybe there was understanding of a checkmate mm -hmm. and just kind of wanting to go straight into the next match. Will we see other variations? I guess that remains to be seen. I don't know if, you know, perhaps my information is outdated. I know that Baraka players did somewhat like the the um, spine burst. I know it's actually mm -hmm. not as reliable as it looks when dealing with Jackie, but I think any option is better than no options. Yeah, I think it's really nice as a neutral tool. And we did see sp uh, this exact uh, variation, the spine burst and the command grab. Uh, although it looked like maybe we saw something different right there. So the last time we saw Gollywomp up in this matchup, the problem is if you lock into uh, a variation really 
set to fight Jackie, that means that Omi can just switch the next game and you're going to go yeah. to this counter pick war over and over. And of course, the first person to win gets the huge advantage there. Instead, this is going to be the ultimate mix up variation, the leg kebab plus blood lunge. I feel like we haven't seen this as a variation for a little bit of time, but I love this one, having command grab and the load to mix things up. And maybe that's you need to kind of get that damage back and lock down Jackie. There's an element of the range too, you know, being able to air to air, being able to get a little bit of extra damage from things like forward four, four crushing blow, which otherwise wouldn't work for you. But again, sadly, Omi has had a wonderful start, and this is the issue. Baraka, he's one of the more momentum-focused characters in the game. Like he's about huge damage that can just explode. He can be about mix-ups, the command grab, the leg kebab. It all kind of needs to work early, though, because without it. Baraka then struggles to get himself going again. As we saw there in that round, Omi completely overwhelming, getting a couple of good hits, high damage, really run-of-the-mill Jackie combos. At this point, you don't really need anything else. Omi's just gone in with a good pick. You're going up against Gollywomp, and you know what the matchup's going to be. You know what character you're going to be fighting. So uh, there's a clear strategy. Pick the character that overwhelms, and Baraka will struggle to deal with it. And if he picks a variation specifically for you, it's like you said before. You can just change and then pick a much better character that Baraka is now stuck fighting. All right, well, this is going to at least be the corner, so a good first opportunity here. Oh, the air conversion. It was jab into command grab, catching on the way up. Unfortunately, that interactable is going to allow Omen to get out. That should be a conversion. So this is one going to be one hit away, and it's going to be tough to get. Yep, stop the chip from happening. Chop Chop going to be one of those super consistent chip finishers. And hey, that's actually turned around pretty quick. I think things were, things were looking really rough for Gollywomp, but just do that again. Easy peasy. Not even any crushing blow spent. It's like I said before, momentum. Baraka is built upon it. It's all about just picking that moment to get huge damage and then maybe something else. The only issue is, yeah, things like forward 4-4, four, four, that crushing blow has been spent now. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a little bit trickier for the Baraka to, to get something from it. But that said, half the work's already done. Sadly, gets a bit greedy with the meter usage there. A good read on the breakaway is only uses the plasma on the floor, knowing the opponent's going to break away. And that's a clean confirm. There is no breaker available for the Baraka, so may as well be checkmate. There's damage uh, on the floor. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the element that Jackie provides. The combo doesn't kill, but you look at the positioning, you look at the fact that there's plasma ready to be put on the floor, and it may as well be done and dusted. Yep, the ultimate character with guaranteed damage. But again, reminder, this is going to be three out of five, so this is not over. We're now moving up to a two-game lead, though, for Omi. It's going to be very, very tough for Gollywomp. And yeah, sorry, I know I immediately said no crushing blows have been spent. Of course, the most important one was spent. But uh, in my mind, I was thinking about the mix-up crushing blows. Uh, that crushing blow on that low, if you can get it in the, uh, you know, in certain strings, if you do high block it and you use meter on that low, it is so much damage. It's one of the strongest crushing blows in the game. So I was more so thinking about the mix crushing blows I, I did like that pick as a variation i'm not sure if we're gonna see it again it worked out one round but uh i mean it's gonna have to work out now against basically every single thing that we run up against this is pretty scary we are gonna see it once again but like you mentioned gotta get things started before any of the mixing actually happen there were elements where it was working well and you know it's it's i know layer one for me to say we've just simply got to see more of that but <laughs> i kind of look at this variation i look at the characters available to omi and there's a lot of mix-ups here that you will have to deal with regardless of the matchup and that i think is, is more than likely what uh, is relying on because in this situation now we have had a slightly better start perhaps i spoke too soon because starting to rush down already in a reverse swing of momentum here from the Jackie but uh, you just need to get through this one match right before the the possibility of changes can even happen we've got to get through this game and there's the good read no punish on the grab though yeah that's strange to uh, be able to avoid that grab and then not actually punish it but uh, that should be it guaranteed match point for Omi uh, Gollywomp was turning things around a little bit you know this variation does seem to be working it might just be a little bit too late and we're just seeing Omi just slightly edge out most of these situations a lot of it is due to this patience I love this patient play uh, when we see so many Jackies go in no matter what I think being able to play pretty uh, pretty safe pretty Suneo style I would say is uh, is always really good for Jackie 
Jackie points. Very characteristic of Omi. You look at the characters, mm -hmm. and even though there's also a sub zero in the roster, there is a slow element to Omi's game plan that I think can really favor. Now, that 1 1 2 is going to punish that clean. I believe Dash Punch minus 10 or something. Uh, and that does mean you're going to get big damage. But speaking of damage, damage that could now possibly end the game. If the combo didn't kill, the potential checkmate afterwards would have done. And that is going to be a 3 0 for Omi. One step closer now to that Evo Hospitality package. Which, trust me, at this point, and this is something that I really want to hit home, all eight of our players in this tournament, they are PlayStation regulars. We have seen them over and over again. Many of these players, though, we haven't had as many chances to see compete offline. I think there are some players that you could perhaps not fully have that with. I mean, I look at someone like a Macaran, who I have seen at a few European majors. I know that KTOP and HDOPE to uh, together have actually traveled a lot more recently, not necessarily thanks to Mortal Kombat, but they, they compete in other fighting games, some of which are actually featured in PlayStation tournaments. You probably would have seen them on other broadcasts and they have traveled to certain events. A lot of these players though, I don't really recall the last time I saw them at an event. And I do not mean that as a bad thing. I mean that, look, it's expensive to travel sometimes. It depends on where you go, obviously. Um, in regards to Evo, that hospitality package is going to be very useful for a European, as I know you mentioned earlier. Uh, certainly a difficult trip for Europeans to make. And that's why these kind of events are game-changing because we can look at one of these players that has been rampantly competing in Mortal Kombat 11 for four years at this point. Many of them have not had that big opportunity, that big shot, that chance to show the world what they can do. Whoever wins this tournament has an absolute opportunity to do just that. And, and that, as a European that's been in the scene for a long time and loves those kind of success stories, that's what the PlayStation tournaments are all about. Anyway, Chef, on to our next match. <laughs> On to our next match, you know, which uh, is one of the players I think I would love to see the most uh, at, at, at EVO in general. Uh, again, I love all these players. I, I, I've been on record saying that I love watching the EU region for these PlayStation tournaments more. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm biased against my own scene, but um, okay. Matrix or Juna was not exactly the player I was talking about, but of course, Matrix Juna is a huge competitor here. And one that I feel like we haven't seen in the PlayStation tournaments as much recently, uh, but of course, an extremely strong player. Uh, known to be very strong and of course what player who would be great to see at evo i think like i mentioned every uh player that we have here i think would be very sick to see at evo uh but of course i was more so highlighting the opponent of matrix juna who is macaran and i know we're kind of skipping through this but i just love talking about macaran i will talk about macaran all the time 24 7 one of my favorite players in the entire game of mortal kombat 11 uh i think seeing macaran at any tournament would be sick Macaran is one of those players that just clicked with Mortal Kombat 11 and just so happens to have Scarlet as a favorite character, a character that we do not see competitively much at all, if at all, to be honest with you. I know there were some uh, Scarlet players out there that, that come to mind, but how many of them are still actively playing and, and uh, still using this character? Mm -hmm. That's to me where it becomes a different story. Macaran has been Scarlet almost through and through for four years not so much recently because let's be real scarlet is not considered one of the stronger characters in the game she does have weaknesses uh she can be extremely vulnerable to interruption uh the flawless block when used at this level hurts her a great deal and to be fair macaran does play around flawless block really well with that character but with it brings those limitations limitations that can sometimes force you to change characters which is why sometimes we've seen macaran use cetrion and to be honest with you in this matchup you know chef and i were talking about this before we went live during rehearsals and everything else could very much see a cetrion here instead of a scarlet because there are certain jackie players out there that i feel like macaran just will not pick scarlet against we would much rather have the sort of the, the stronger neutral and maybe a little bit more of the air control that Cetrion brings uh, that Scarlet doesn't. What Scarlet is going to have over Cetrion is like double the damage. So <laughs> maybe, maybe you got up against a 950 health character, maybe Scarlet uh, and the heavy hitting combos might help. But Chef, we'll find out in a minute. 
We will, we will. Uh, I, I've definitely seen this go both ways. Uh, I've seen the counterpick work really well for Macaran in this. And again, it's not a counterpick per se. It is just a different pick. Um, but I've seen the Cetron pick work really well against Jackie's, but I've also seen it not work so well against Jackie's and then switching back to Scarlet was the pick. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with like how comfortable your opponent is and what their play style is. And one of the big things is that uh, Macaran is very well known for being a really, really strong anti-error and uh, not to say that we don't see really good anti-airs from Cetrion, but um, there are some like very specifically good anti-airs from Scarlet in very specific situations that can work really well against Jackie, but we'll we'll see again. It's it's completely up in the air. Uh, I think last time that I did see Macaran on this broadcast, it was a whole lot of the Cetrion, but we saw a whole lot of Cetrion mirrors. So um, that was just kind of a pick to not want to have to deal with that level of zoning. And uh, it could go really either way. I think either way is fine. Also, especially the fact that we are best of five the entire way through today means that we could see some pretty big, uh, like, risk taking, right? Like, you could start off with Scarlet and then go to Cetron, which it looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. Thank you, Macaran, for uh, making me look smart. A little bit smarter, I guess. Let's have a look at those moves, too, because uh, I haven't seen Macaran in some time, but I'm always familiar with the boiling point. And the teleport, of course. Teleport, I think, can just be used a lot with Scarlet just for repositioning. And haha, mm -hmm. -ha, layer one commentary here from Ketchup. But what I mean by that is um, it's not really <laughs> to deal with projectiles or anything like that. It's if there's even a suggestion that Jackie's going to put you in the corner, that teleport repositions and gets you out. And I think that's the main reason to see it. Boiling point, however, that hurts on the best of days, let alone when you're playing a 950 health character like Jackie. So if Macaran is on point, Matrix is gonna have to work really hard to crack into this defense. Oh my gosh, right now the one uh, being uh, cracked is Matrix Juna's defense. This has just been a huge amount of damage from not even really getting that close. Uh, kind of mid-range, even though the normals have been hitting mid-range, that's been pretty much all that's happened. All right, finally able to get in, gonna get a weird conversion, not able to get the full combo, but uh, at least making Macaron stand in the goo is gonna be something. However, you really need to, oh, never mind. You need to look at the second round is what I was gonna say. <laughs> just kidding. Well, you're looking at what's happening in that round, and it was all ground control. And it's more than likely that Matrix is going to look at that and think, you know what, no, I've had enough of this. Speaking of which, there's that teleport. You're getting a good read on a button from a Jackie, and then just teleporting yourself out of the corner. Because if there's one way that Macaran is going to have complete control of this match, it lies in the mid-screen. Speaking of which, though, lovely neutral duck, we're going to get the boiling point into disgusting damage for what it is the forward two isn't going to quite hit its mark however here comes matrix the chance to do something goes in for a grab though all of this unbreakable not that matrix would have been able to break it without two bars oh. and oh good lord oh god oh. turning him into strawberry jam that's a clean game one and i think we lost count already how many boiling points just hit on their own there Matrix might start jumping and maybe using the leap a bit more now. It's going to test the anti-air potential of Macaran. But if those anti-airs are on point, this is kind of where I've historically seen Matrix kind of struggle in these PlayStation tournaments is that the Jackie is absolutely fantastic. But when Matrix encounters an opponent that has this rock solid defense mm -hmm. that can anti-air the leap, can deal with the, the, the sort of the shrapnel blast mix-ups, I haven't often seen that sort of next layer, you know, that next thing to adapt to. Uh, and for the sake of today, I really hope that we do see it because Macaran's looking pretty rock solid right now, Chef extremely rock solid that was usually when we see a match with jackie in it that goes that fast you just assume that the jackie won but uh that was a scarlet win that was one of the fastest scarlet wins i think i've ever seen and it's just a lot about just how strong that zoning is and i mean we, <laughs> we know macaran's good but also this might be a little bit of a, a lack of uh, matchup experience or at least recent matchup experience from uh Mrs. juna so we'll see if this can be a little bit of an adaptation again though you want to jump because this zoning is working so well but uh it's it, i mean it's so scary to jump against macaran no matter who you are oh my god oh what my is going Lord. on why are these all hitting did they patch it last minute to make that move unblockable or something i think it's fine do that till the end of the game you know the end of the game's life just give scarlet a little bit of a break 
we just throw it out the window. Oh, and, oh my I, I think lord! You're right. I think you're right. <laughs> I mean, look, we're talking about adaptations, and the first thing that is is the pressing issue. You just gotta start blocking that, man. I mean, there's there's only so much other stuff I can say about it. That is so much damage, and even more the fact that Jackie is 950 health. It's gonna hurt her so much more than everyone else. However, oh, I was about to say there's an opportunity, but Smoke Bomb said, Ryan, shut up. <laughs> That's what yeah, that... Enough, enough talk, Ryan. I'm fed up of you. There's the launch now. Good read on the breakaway. Ooh. Ooh, I didn't, I didn't actually not seen that conversion before. I did not know the down one connected into the bowling part right there. That's actually wild. Uh, so, um, great stuff. Okay, here we go. Finally, what I feel like is the first real big opportunity for Matrix. Gonna get a huge amount of damage. The breakaway happens, which is honestly a pretty little bit late of the breakaway. So, uh, no defensive bar is going to be huge if there's one more opening even, but... We'll see if we do actually get that opening as Macaran is using that movement so well to get away. That walk speed from Scarlet is... Okay, come on, seriously. What is going on? Just, they're not getting blocked at all. This is wild. There we go, finally. There we go. That's what we were looking for. Oh, ooh, the shrapnel blast. Really smart use of the shrapnel blast to keep Matrix in the air there. Unfortunately, uh, wasn't able to uh, prevent the... Almost inevitable at that point, being caught out again, two to zero for Macaran. However, however, this is a clear moment now for Matrix to reassess because mm -hmm. there's there's the matchup and there's how your opponent is approaching this, and there's you're getting overwhelmed by just grounded boiling point, and the more you get hit by that, it's a long animation. You got a lot of time to see the damage you're taken, to get annoyed about it, to get frustrated. Anything that might bother you now, you kind of just need to disregard, right? Take a deep breath, refresh, a new game, a new possibility. The set is still within winning distance. You have to reverse sweep. It's no easy feat, but you have to get your head in the game now because losing your winner's bracket comfort zone to stuff like that is such a demoralizing way to go down in the bracket. Yeah, and it just looks so solid for Macaran. Macaran makes this character. I'm sorry, I, I just constantly gush about Macaran. It doesn't matter what's what else is happening on the screen, but Macaran makes this character look so good. I mean, and, which Scarlet uh, players are still around? I I can't recall many. I, I can't. I don't know any. I don't know a single one. I mean, there have been some great Scarlet players in the past, but uh, I mean, like I, I can think of like for example, like Twixie was doing well. Of course, yep. we had um, we had King Gambler for a while, but like nobody is playing Scarlet anymore. And honestly, you know, I mean, Macaran. I feel like now has brought us to the point where nobody's ever played Scarlet on this level. Like, clearly, in my eyes, the best in the world of the character. And that's not to say there's that much competition, but it is clearly an amazing level for what is considered a low-tier character. And we're just seeing such a good example of that in this set. But I want to see Matrix can make uh, at least some of a comeback here. Get on the board. Whoa. We'll see if it happens. Huge whiff punish to start things off. Max damage, Jeff. Max damage. And we amplify just to make it hurt so much more. 350 just like that. And now Macaran. A safe amount of life to work with. In this point now, just going for the meaty, keeping the uh, opponent standing for whatever mix-up comes next. The throw text. I mean, this is kind of the thing though, Chef. It's the defense of Macaran that has always been so scary. The defense and the neutral. Now that is an unfortunate whiff, and Matrix will take full advantage of that, quite rightly so. But the throw text, the whiff punishing, the anti-air, and then you couple the gigantic damage on top of that, that is the recipe that makes Macaran such a scary Scarlet player. Now, speaking of which, here comes Matrix. Point blank pressure, back to back throw. I like it. Now, potential guess for the round. Wake up jump. Ooh. Macaran going for the unpredictable. Anti air! Oh, oh, oh no! That was a micro dash down one fatal blow anti air to punish the uh, blast. That was actually incredible. That is. Uh, I. Uh... <laughs> That was so much presence of mind. Ah, oh, and Matrix was doing such a good job, too. Uh, honestly, definitely coming back in the set, right? Definitely starting to adapt. But the question is, is it a little bit too late? That was looking like almost a guaranteed win for a minute. I mean, one more hit almost for sure would have been. And here's another really strong opening. So Matrix just has to keep this up. 
good. Pressure there from Matrix. This is exactly where you want to be. A delayed wake up did somewhat mess with that timing. The heal potential and now the overheads to come through. Baiting and punishing the roll. And we're going to spend another bar of Amplify on that boiling point. Macaran, the combo damage plus the heal from the blood projectile. We're now in a real comfortable place. Matrix, anti aired by that preemptive forward two to keep the distance. The shrapnel blast again. In this case, do we spend Fatal Blow? Yes. We create a situation where maybe one more touch is going to equalize and bring us around on the board. This Fatal Blow, it's not going to do tons of damage, but it's going to set up for what could be the end of the round with just one hit. Very easily. Honestly, very easy on either side. Just needs one strong connection and the Matrix is playing so much more patient. I love to see it. Uh, this is so scary. You were like one leap away from this ending. The teleport out, that was so risky, but it almost paid off. Back in the corner, Antire. though. No. Overhead. Oh! Oh, just one more hit of anything. No, oh, it's a forward four whip. Punish maximum range. And once more, like you said, turning them into jam. And that's going to be that. I mean, that was honestly, it was a really good comeback from, from Matrix overall. Overall, the course of the set, things were starting to look so much better. Uh, I mean, there's no way to, to sugarcoat it, honestly. That start of that set was rough. It was super rough. It was looking really bad. But towards the end, everything was very, very even. It just maybe took a little bit too much time to adapt. Luckily, there's a loser's bracket today. So I think we're going to see Matrix Juna do a lot better as the day goes on. Might have just been one of those warm-up things, but Macaran will be the one moving forward to the winner's semis. I mean, let's be real. Matrix is one of the younger players in the scene. Um, Mortal Kombat 11 has brought forward quite a few players that are of basically the new generation, that next step in competitive NetherRealm, where you can play in all of the online tournaments in the world, but there is there's still steps to be made to get yourself completely comfortable pumped up and ready now i'm certainly not wanting to speak on behalf of matrix because obviously i do not know how they feel in this match however stakes are high today um this is the fgc arcade road to evo winner gets an evo hospitality package something that makes it very very likely a player can travel to vegas to play in evo which is no doubt going to be the biggest tournament they've ever competed in and might compete in for some time so my point is it's a big deal and for the newer generation that have played in a lot of online competition something like this is still bigger there there's more to play for and sadly there's more to lose because of it only one of these players has taken that prize i'm looking at this bracket i'm looking at these players no one's going to care about that second place prize you know cash is fantastic and, and it absolutely helps you compete but for this specific tournament that first place is all that matters so hopefully you know shake yourself off we'll have a quick look at the bracket and we'll look at how things are going to progress here for our next matchup uh but you got to get yourself ready, you know. And I, 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 from what I could see there from Matrix, it looked like there was some nerves. I don't know what else to say about getting hit by like the boiling points in those first couple of games, other than uh, you're just not playing like yourself, right? I'm, I'm sure Matrix is frustrated because that's not the Matrix we've seen before. Yeah, and like I said, it, it was back to what we started to expect later in the set. It was just one of those weird things, you know. Uh, sometimes it does take some people some time to warm up in a tournament. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, I had to go to work or I had to come back from school and I, you know, just barely made it in time. I remember there was a time where Okakui was literally, like, making it back, like, 15 minutes, like, after <laughs> every bracket uh, from work and you just have to kind of warm up. So things happen. Things do tend to happen. It's definitely not a uh, an uncommon thing to to see that one was a little bit rough just a player that you really don't want to not be warmed up against i i do hope we get to see more uh matrix juna on stream though so we'll uh we'll, we'll we'll have to see but i do want to talk about our next matchup because this is one that i'm very excited for this is a battle of some of the newer players that we are seeing kind of in the playstation tournaments and two of them that i love starks who i did not get a chance to see too much before the last time that we got to see these fight nights but has such a sick Jax. i love watching Jax in this game anyway I love watching a talented Jax. And I gotta say, in the uh, MK1 stress test, Jax is my cameo of choice. So I've developed a new appreciation for this character. But I tell you what, when you and I saw Starks compete mere weeks ago, might even have been last week, actually, the uh, fight nights, we saw other characters from Starks, but it was the Jax that really stole the audience and stole us, you know, because this Jax was, was so good 
easily Starks the best character and gave Starks the most success. Will that success reign true today? We will find out. But man, do I love looking at a good Jax player do their thing in tournament. Now, their opponent, well, you said it yourself. Another mm -hmm. player that we, we we haven't seen tons and tons of in PlayStation. More recently is when we've been seeing Zippery. And similar to lots of talent. In this case, Noob Cybot. And the execution to back the character up. So, should be a fantastic match. Right, yeah, both of these characters. I love watching a good player for both of these characters uh, so, so much. It's rare. I would say maybe noob a little bit less rare. We've seen some strong noobs over the course of history, but over time, we, we've certainly lost out on a lot of new players, uh, and Zippery, for sure, is Where one of the stronger ones. It's been forever. <laughs> I, know, I know. My gosh, I miss a lot of the uh, the old names for sure, but uh, like I said, Zippery playing extremely well. This is going to be a pretty hard-hitting matchup, and I, I do have to be honest even this many years into the game i can't say that i've ever seen a strong new versus a strong jacks more than like one or two times over for like four years <laughs> it's such a rare matchup jacks is one of those characters that's all about that constant 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 rushdown like it's a little bit different i think now with ultimate because you can pick variations that uh, cater a little bit more to that high damage output but certainly before when we would see Jax maybe a little bit more was small hits and he was he was able to do it constantly to you but it was little bits here and there noob cybot tends to be the opposite now oh. we're talking about Jax <laughs> like we're gonna see Jax Starks has opted to go for the sub-zero and I think it's quite clear chef that Starks there are some matchups where we probably won't ever see the Jax. I'm going to imagine because Noob Cybot is the one that's in control of the range here. Probably doesn't want to deal with it. And interesting, we are seeing the Air Polar Axe, which is a uh, a pretty cool option to be able to deal with some of the uh, like zoning tools that Noob has. Now, of course, you have to be very careful of up shadow, uh, but we're going to see actually right off the bat to kind of help control some space and say, hey, even at this mid range, you have to watch out for me. Uh, but what you have to watch out for is eating a full combo from Noob. Now, no defensive bar, not going to get separate. Second opportunity for a huge combo, but already half of Stark's life is gone. Looking for the down four anti-air. Looks like did it a little bit too early there. The whole thing whips rather than getting a full combo. And that full combo should have even won the round. No exaggeration. Now, one thing I want to point out about Starks, or Zippery, excuse me, to keep an eye out on. The Breaker. I've never seen a noob Cybot player so heavily focused on getting a good read on when to use the Unbreakable back to. The Armor Breaking back to. It's normally, I, I still believe, one of the worst armor breakers because it's unlikely to connect against a good mm -hmm. opponent. Zippery tends to shut me up more often than not, so we'll see if we can see that again today. I think I've seen that connect like four times in tournament, and I think three of them were Zippery. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to be I'm, I'm counting, I guess, if we see it more today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it could be could be more for sure, but I, I agree. Obviously, not one that we see a lot, but the reward can be huge, gigantic, if we ever uh, get to that point, but... Uh, right now, oh, huge risk. That was weird. That was weird the way that that, uh, that punish whiffed. But, uh, I mean, hey, you, you can go for some pretty simple punishes on teleport. It's a very punishable move. Decided to go for something a little bit more fancy. That was a, that had to have been an input error as well. The Absolutely rising nice ice raw. I refuse to believe that that was intentional. <laughs> the point blank rising ice. Hey, who Ooh, knows? Two. Spaces it out. Down four acknowledges the down four hits too far away to get anything from it. So plays it safe. Doesn't risk whipping something into losing the round. Now this is sub zero we're talking about. All it takes here, any freeze is gonna win the round. Now last breath <gasps> starting to activate. I don't know what that was. A standing two? Was Starks trying to forward two there? This is what I mean, Chef. You know what I just talked about Matrix? Mm -hmm. And I said that we have a lot of of young players getting involved now in competitive mortal combat tournaments like these cause uncharacteristic execution errors that walk up standing two it might have been a forward two that just the hands can't link up with the brain because you're stressed mm -hmm. and you're nervous and all this other stuff Again, not to speak on behalf of the player because you never know what they're feeling. He might, that might have just been a mistake. You never know. It might have just been a, a simple error. But a tournament like this can provide a lot more room for things to go wrong.
because you're nervous and nerves affect mm -hmm. up and coming players so much more than those that have done it for years on end yeah we actually saw a bunch of input errors right we saw the raw rising ice we saw an attempt to reversal slide on the uh the low sh clone from the low clone slide from noob and that's a punish that was actually a true punish but instead just got a standing normal and that was like literally two seconds before we saw that weird standing two if so uh i do believe that starks is making some uh pretty significant input errors at the moment hopefully that was just a one game thing there are at least two more games in this set but zippery looking at least as strong as last time already Already, already driving Starks into the corner, and that can be, of course, just damage land. Now, I've said this about um, Zippery in the past. In the last fight nights that we saw him compete in, it's, it's all about that grounded control. And if you are a new Cybot player at this point in the game, that's where your game plan lies. You know, it's all about keeping someone feeling like they can't move. They're stuck on a grid almost. And the best new Cybot players can really enforce that. Now, here comes Starks. Looking for a full combo here. The breaker and actually fatal blow. Really good timing on that breakaway because I don't think that was free. I do think Zippery would have had to have made a read on where that breaker was coming. And that's a good timing on it. Oh, watch out. The 1-1. One, one. Oh, the punish on the slide as well, Chef. That was too close to cool, if you ask me. That was, that was, but it is at least good to see Starks getting on board. Uh, that was very, very scary, especially with the, yeah, that Fatal Blow interaction. Nice! That actually was an anti-air, at least punished the landing recovery frame, so uh, one way or another it worked. And this damage is just, it's adding up so quickly from, from Zippery. I, I'm actually still really surprised that we don't see Zippery use the uh, anti-air hook, because they get so many forward twos and so many air-to-air -air conversions, but hey, they're getting enough damage without it, I guess. Yeah. The way their game plan is built, you'd think it would lend itself to the sickle snag so much. But then you think, what would they sacrifice? They'd need to take away the launching teleport, the air teleport, or the slide. And all three of them is threatening victory. Some pretty large mileage right now. There's the overhead, the eternal sub-zero. You're going to get mixed up at some point. Looks for the one, two, four. That would have been a crushing blow. Unfortunately, misses the final hit. And the final hit was where the damage was going to come from. Ooh, oh, the down four is going to connect. Oh, the win. oh, what the duck? That's going to be it for sure. We're going to finally our first 1-1 one, one of the day. Very nice stuff. Starks from a very rough first game filled with a lot of execution errors, managing to get back into the set. Uh, definitely warmed up, which uh, maybe maybe cooled down if you're playing Sub-Zero. I will one point out one thing, though, in that set, and that is that Zippery was making some interesting choices, uh, breaking away against Rising Ice, which is kind of a uh, little mini game with in itself uh, we do know that rising ice once you use it if you can just down to afterwards it guarantees the damage and we saw that a couple times and a couple times it was bro broken away from in that situation so you can actually uh, I guess like wait and wait to see what their first or second normal is after the rising ice and then break away if they're continuing the combo Otherwise, you just take the down two and you're not really losing that much You're losing maybe like one scaled jab worth of damage But we saw a lot of early breakaway from zippery which ended up being no defensive bar which ended up being the set or the game Now we'll see what kind of turnarounds we see in this matchup then uh, more solid on the execution front was Starks there. We, we didn't see anything that was like that first game with some really, really weird stuff. There's no other way to describe it. However, now, where do we go from here? We jump in Air Axe, something so good for Sub-Zero, especially against a character that wants to anti-air. Noob Cybox down four is such an amazing anti-air. His standing one can work, his down one can work for anti-crosser. The down four really is the magic button though. And if you think that's gonna happen, Air Axe will completely shut it down. Now we've started off pretty strong on both parts. Now there's a forward two and a good breakaway there from Starks. It's gonna take a long time for that breaker to come back and ooh, air to air jump too. I mean, Zipri's was trying to scout out that axe, I suppose. Yeah, and it did work, but here we go. He's going to be the full combo. Again, there it, it is. is you again. See, you can just wait one hit for that breakaway, and that's huge. That could have been a lot of defensive bar left, but that is a huge crushing blow. We are one hit away, but now one hit on the other side. The overhead's going to connect, and Starks up around in the set now. Again, th those breakaway situations, it's rising ice. It's very specific, but uh, it's definitely something you got to learn. You hate to use the crushing blow on the back one there for Noob Cybot and not win the round. The big thing about back one grab that gives the KB is that it's all unbreakable damage. If Noob Cybot wants to get similar damage unbreakable, I mean like everything else that we're going to see in this matchup is tied to this amplified teleport. 
Oh, no breakaway. <laughs> Made the decision. And that is an element that makes it kind of hard for Noob Cyborg to get damage against you is because you can just wait to see if the button's been used or not, right? And I think Starks is being really patient. Overwhelmed in the corner, but frankly, that's just Zippery having a really, really good corner game with the Noob Cyborg. Yeah, Noob can be so hard to escape once uh, it has you in the corner. Uh, you just got to figure out a good way out. That's not going to land to about like 50% damage from that Noob. Uh, but right now, we're just actually seeing Zippery back out. Not going to try to continue the pressure. Just going to use this space to try and get a little bit more zoning damage. But nice. Wow. Down two to convert from the air to air, air to air. Maybe expecting a breakaway as well. We have seen a lot of these quick breakaways, but not enough defensive bar from Zippery. So uh, just managed to get the minimum little amount of damage right there. Coming in for a trade. There's that jump too, though. No meter for Zippery to turn it into anything else. That would have almost been the game, should there have been meter to spend. Meter being spent on the slide there. Loses out to the air axe. Start with a fatal blow. Let's not forget, this is Sub-Zero we're talking about. One freeze and a set of mix-ups and you're done. Yeah, this is oh, two mix-ups. Oh, jump back. Oh. Down two, no way to escape. Uh, those two mix-ups never came. Now we're two to one in Zippery's favor, either kind of just winning in order here. But yeah, like like you were mentioning, that was literally like, okay, you land like forward two into Fatal Blow, and then the Fatal Blow gives you a perfect mix-up, and that mix-up could guarantee the win, especially with Rising Ice. So uh, that was a lot closer than it actually looked. It was just Zippery didn't let it get to that spot. And uh, this is looking to be a close set. I would not be surprised if we ended up going to a game five here. Speaking of which, though, one game in the balance. Oh, it's going to be Sub-Zero all the way. I was thinking, you know, because we have seen some character changes in the past from Starks. Like, to refresh everyone, the Jax really is the uh, character that we have come to appreciate the most. But clearly there are certain matchups where Starks just does not want to use the Jacks, and, and Noob Cybot has got to be one of them. Yeah, I'm I'm sad that we're not seeing it uh, for sure. But I mean, hey, the subs been working okay. You know, the subs pretty decent here. Definitely had some matchup knowledge. Yeah, there we go. You cannot throw oh. out. Honestly, one of the best reactors with teleport, especially air teleport, I think of any Noob Cybot is Zippery. Loves teleporting to punish things. Do it in the air, it starts up a lot faster than the grounded version. That's why the air teleport is so good. Like on the ground there, a regular teleport in theory might have been able to connect, but if he was in the air at the time, you absolutely bet that would have been teleport. I'm talking about teleport. It's been a few seconds and the round's already done. Zippery now on match point. This sub zero from Starks is looking in trouble, Chef. It is. Needs to find that first hit to kind of gain the momentum back. Not going to be the easiest thing. Even though the axes are landing, they're not that much damage. Uh, I do Reaction. select variation, but again, yep, I, you just can't do it. Don't test them. It's it's like, uh, it reminds me of um, of Mirko. You know how you could just never test Mirko's reactions with teleport? I think it's the same thing here with Zippery. Uh, just with a much uh, different type of teleport. Wow, even the jumps! Look at that! Didn't even have meter to convert from it and still use it as an anti-air. That is a beautiful thing. Zippery's in the zone, and that's why I'm very nervous for Starks now. Lovely punish on the back one, getting a bit overzealous perhaps with that, going in for the punishable string, but we'll see if it matters. Blocks in time. I was almost half expecting a teleport there, to be honest with you, but trying to play it safe and not getting into your own momentum too much. Sometimes players can do unsafe things. I think that back one punish was certainly one of those. The last breath is kind of all Starks has left now. Now the punish, we're going to take it. Hmm. Forward two to start things off. And a forward two <laughs> fatal blow, sub zero, <laughs> dealing the round away. But truthfully, Zippery shouldn't have given him the opportunity. That teleport was unnecessary. It was, but uh, first of all, can I say it was really interesting to punish with forward two four crushing blow, which I mean, hey, it worked out really well. I like it. It's just, I never really see anybody do that. Uh, on the other side, this is the exact situation that I was talking about in the last set about why that was actually so close, but we're now going into a round three here. Still match point for Zippery, and there's no now one KB less and one fatal blow less for Stark. So this is going to be have to be a little bit more honest of a round. The use of the air axe has been really messing with Zippery's confidence on that down four anti-air. There's been a couple of instances where he's been second guessing it and delaying the input just a little bit where the jump in's connecting fully. Speaking of which, ice full, full combo now. Take the down two just because let's just get some damage on the board. Zippery's still on match point here. Looking for the forward two, down three. Oh, the forward two again. Starks caught jumping around here. 
Oh, oh no, just getting hit by the random slide. This is definitely within like one grab can set you up to like guaranteed chip range. That's a oh, slide, but oh, slide to slide. Live by the slide, you die by the slide. That was just all three slides in a row. And that's gonna be Zippery taking it. No more uh, game fives, not yet at least, but we are gonna see the friendship. One of my favorite friendships in the game. I think this one might be the best. It's my favorite. It's definitely, definitely, definitely my favorite. But it was a good set. It was a really, really good set in the end there, Starks. The comeback was, I mean, it had Sub-Zero written all over it, but it was really smart. It was punishing with the forward 2-4 to get the crushing blow to make it unbreakable and then being close enough to do another mix-up into Fatal Blow, which obviously was able to steal away that round. Sadly, wasn't enough to win the entire game to bring us into a Game 5 situation. However, Zippery will now be moving on in winner's bracket. And as we speak, our first loser's bracket match, or lower bracket, I should say, on this show, is happening, I think, between Gollywomp and uh, Matrix Juna. That will be happening as we speak. And obviously, when that match concludes and we know the result, the next time we throw to the graphic for the bracket, you'll see it and we'll be able to talk about which player is sadly out of the tournament already. But it's a hard path to even get here. You know, you have to do well enough to, to place, uh, to, to make it through, to being part of this final eight where there's a lot on the line. I'm going to be saying this all show long because this is a big deal. This is getting a player in a position where they can attend EVO to compete in Mortal Kombat 11, which is no doubt, you know, going to be, it surely has to be the final major MK11 tournament because basically shortly after EVO for MK11, MK1's out and the new chapter begins. Everyone wants to be part of that final major tournament, right? Especially if they've been playing it for four years. Yeah, it's actually uh, really, really nice for once. Uh, this is kind of like a side note, but uh, for NRS players, every single year for the past 12 years now uh, that we've had a new game, it is released shortly before EVO, like two months before EVO. This is actually the release timing for uh, MK1. I think it's really sick because we get to actually know this is our final EVO. And then right after this EVO, we, we get to move to another game, you know, which is so, so cool. We've never had that timing before, so I'm certainly excited excited for it but uh, I think we do get a chance to now to look at our bracket uh, because we do have one more uh, winner's bracket match that is honestly in my uh, my eyes definitely a heartbreaker uh, where we're gonna have the twins battling out in uh, luckily it's in winners uh, luckily luckily it's in winners but we are going to have of course K-Top and H-Dope uh, battling it out in uh, in a chance to one of them potentially getting uh, help with a trip to Evo I do Ideally, we, could, we would see them both, but that's not how this tournament works. <clears throat> now, with these two players, we could talk about their characters all day. Against each other, I'm not sure it's relevant. Uh, there's something about brothers, twins, siblings, you name it, really. Playing against each other in tournament, you never really see them use their mains. And the reason for that we, we actually, Chef, you and I talked about this before we even went live. Brothers going up against each other and never using their mains, that actually has its own mind game behind it. You, <laughs> yes. you train against your brother or your, your sister or your, your sibling, like, in general. They know you. They know everything that you do. They know what characters you like. They know exactly how you want to play this character. They know the decisions that you make. Anything that might be a small detail against someone else they won't be ready for, your training partner will. And that, I think, is so often why we see other characters. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we saw the Jackie there for K-Top. We saw the Spawn for H-Dope. In my heart of hearts, I do not think that's the matchup we're going to see. I think it's going to be two totally different characters. Now that you said it, that's absolutely the matchup we're going to see, but only because you said it, uh, and that's how the curse goes. But uh, for sure, they have played some really interesting matchups against each other. Uh, and there are so many strong characters on the side of both of these players. Uh, I mean, especially H-Dope has a gigantic roster uh, to be able to pick from. The last time that we saw H-Dope, I think it was mostly, at least in the PlayStation tournaments, I saw mostly Cetrion, uh, and of course Cetrion and Jackie, two uh, very, very strong picks, so we could just end up seeing that in general, but uh, the spawn is there, We've, you know, the, the Shiva was there once upon a time. There are just so many millions of different picks from, uh, from both sides, really, so uh, I 
feel like if we start talking about what the matchup could be, then it could uh, just end up being a kind of a waste of time. But I'm going to talk about how uh, strong these players are and the fact that I really just like want to see them at more events. Like you mentioned, they have been able to travel to a few more events. I think they traveled to... Uh, I can't actually remember what it was. They did travel to an event for uh, MK11 recently Frosty? in particular. It might have been Frosty. It was one of the events around that time. There are a few events that happened like kind of in short succession right there. So there I think it a, may have been that. There was an American tournament that had a qualifier for a different game that the two of them both compete in as well. And they mm -hmm. entered Mortal Kombat at the same time. Um, so they kind of just entered it while they were there. And they both did very well, if my memory serves, actually. So um that that's just the hallmark of the two players being just really really talented right um as soon yeah. as the match is ready obviously we'll be jumping in and, and showing it so we can see what's actually happening um but how this matchup is going to go i am not sure uh, we've seen them play against each other in the past and it has been may as well have been random select i'm going to be honest uh, we have seen almost the entire cast from them combined because there was a point in playstation tournaments where they were playing in these tournaments almost on a weekly basis and on those weekly tournaments they would often have to fight against each other so yeah. uh, I, I reached a point where i lost count i, I, I lost count <laughs> of what characters they were playing well, one of the cool things is that there was a point even where um, I would say that we had seen a lot less spawn or almost very little spawn from H-Dope. And then we saw a spawn as a pick kind of for one of the first times against K-Top. And it was like, whoa, this is a prize pick. And a lot of times once the, these picks have been used like up against their training partners, their siblings, um, we end up seeing it as more of their mainstay, but they're a little bit more comfortable trying it against somebody that they already know or saying like, I know that this could work against your character because this is what we've labbed before so sometimes even when they do pick up some new uh you know new options for their arsenal it ends up being something that uh is kind of first shown off against their sibling which is cool to see but uh, i'm also you know just while we're waiting for this match to start i want to say i'm really excited for uh what these two can pull off in uh an mk1 because we know that they were very good at mkx which i would say uh is probably the closest level of chaos to mk1 and they had an unfortunate story of course where uh they weren't able to really compete towards the early end of mk11's life and they're still very dominant despite having missed a good segment of the competitive life of mk11 so so if they can start fresh in MK1, they've got that chaos on their side. I'm actually pretty excited to see it. The thing about these two is they are incredibly good at picking up a game quickly. And I think mm -hmm. that has been uh, one of the things that we've seen from them. And again, I, I really want to reiterate here, and uh, I'm sure it's fine to do so because so many of the games they play are actually covered in PlayStation yeah. tournaments as well or have been in the past. So it's, it's one of those things where... A new game comes out, a game that does not have an established legacy, but has its own thing. The game that makes it what it is. These two have often been able to pick up those games almost instantly, figure it out. They know what they're doing. They start playing in tournaments. And they start doing really, really well. If you are a Netherrealm player, you are used to learning new games. It just comes <laughs> with the territory. It's Mortal Kombat 11 was the first time the cycle as it were of a new game every two or so years was broken and it's been four years now we're about to have mortal kombat one these players have been playing either casually first and then competitive with something like mortal kombat x they've been in that mindset ever since they started so now with mortal kombat one it seems and feels very very much like what netherrealm always do with a new mortal kombat it doesn't play anything like the other three people were always talking about and asking even us <clears throat> what game does it play like the most it doesn't play like any of the netherrealm era yeah. one. nine x eleven it doesn't play like any of them and my point is they can pick that up get the new mechanics pick strong characters that cater to their style they're good to go I, I, I strongly believe they will be two of Europe's stronger players, I think, once the game comes out. Yeah, for
for sure. Um, and like you mentioned, not only are they so good at picking up uh, like just NRS game to NRS game because they've been good in basically every one that they've been able to pick up. But uh, yeah, they I think they've been in actually it's either three or four different games on broadcast for PlayStation tournaments, just even in sort of like the fight nights or the monthly finals or whatever, you know, each one was some of the FGC arcade stuff. Uh, like, for example, I know one of them that they're really still quite good at is Tekken, both of them. So they uh, that that just even shows that you can you can jump sub genres of fighting games. So they're uh, they're definitely going to be good at picking up no matter what game uh, they end up kind of setting their sights on. Now, hopefully we can get them in game, an actual game. You know, the game that we want to watch them in is Mortal Kombat 11 right We've now. We've been finding but... <laughs> out behind the scenes. We have been finding out behind the scenes what's actually happening here. Uh, as far as I'm aware, we are having difficulties getting one of them into the lobby. So we're going for a lobby restart. Trust me, as soon as the match is ready to go, uh, we will actually jump in and, and see what's happening. But yeah, sometimes <laughs> these things happen. We can do a million shows and you can get a million players in. Obviously, now we're live. One of the players isn't quite in there yet, but hopefully we'll be uh, we'll be sorting that that real real soon. But I mean, it's not like we don't have anything to talk about. We have the Mortal Kombat One stress test happening this weekend as we speak. So you know, players from around the world are getting their hands on the next Mortal Kombat title. I'm sure a bunch of these players actually here uh, have probably been messing around with it a bit themselves. Although, truthfully, maybe more so after this tournament. If you've qualified yeah. for something that has a chance to. Uh, get you in a position to attend Evo, you're probably going to be focusing on this first, I would imagine. Yes, yes, and there's actually still a good amount of time left on that uh, stress test, but yeah, the stakes are, are so huge today. The uh, the fact that you get a chance to, I mean, that that's, that's quite a bit of money, this care package going towards uh, Evo, so I uh, certainly would at least prioritize that, and you definitely don't want to get mixed up. If you're not used to jumping between games, you don't want to get mixed up and be like, oh no, I was playing Sub-Zero and I was accidentally trying to dive kick, you know, something like that. It's like, wait a minute, uh, that would be a terrible way to lose out on potential potentially like thousands of dollars and then even more whatever depends on how you do at evo so i mean i, I want to see a lot of these players play in the uh, mk1 beta i've certainly or sorry stress test i've certainly been having a good time with it overall uh been learning some some kenshi mix been learning some katana combos it's definitely what i'm going to be jumping on a little bit later after this but uh yeah, got to focus on MK11. It's wild. It was actually really funny. I was thinking about, you know, like uh, I, was, I was talking to one of my friends and I was like, wow, yeah, like I'm, I'm casting MK11 tomorrow. Like uh, I mentioned this at the start of the show, but like the fact that like we finally got to get our hands on uh, MK1 and try it. And then today is the show to see who gets to go to the final MK11 Evo. It's like, wow, this like really feels like I can feel the gravity of the situation. Like it feels like we're at the end, which was such an endless uh, kind of time for for NRS, you know, this MK11 era. It's weird for it to almost be over. And now it's almost like sad. <laughs> no, I I agree. I feel the same. It's Mortal Kombat 11 has been such a big part of the competitive uh, Mortal Kombat space for at, at this point, you know, it's it's bizarre to think that it's almost maybe coming to an end sounds too concrete, but yeah, we were about to hit the point with a new game and we're we're trying to bring up that that last final tournament, you know. Um, I do believe, actually, if I heard production correctly, we are going to throw to a quick break and get the players in the lobby. So as soon as we're good to go, we'll be back. Sorry for this. Sometimes these things happen. But when this match is ready to go, trust me, we'll be back and ready to talk about it.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here live for the FGC Arcade Road to Evo here for PlayStation Tournaments, where we're in the process of just getting H-Dope and K-Top in the same lobby so they can actually play against each other. Uh, this is... It sounds really strange. It's just these are two brothers. I assume they live together. Um, I've been commentating the two of these for many, many, many years. Um, I wish I could say this was the first time we've had trouble getting them in to each other. I don't know what the situation is with them. Um, obviously, you know, different part of the world and everything else. It, it could be many, many different reasons. But if they are good to go, then so are we. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to watch this match. Of course, it's a heartbreaker to see the twins have to go up against each other. And hey, we are, in fact, going to see them finally get in the Ooh. lobby. And we're going to see an interesting business. Yep, sorry. I completely cut you off with that one, but <laughs> no, no. It, it, look, it's it's rare that they go in with main characters instantly. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those times. K-Top's going in with the Jackie. H-Dope has used Joker in the past in these tournaments and has done very well. So uh, I feel like we're not messing around this time, Chef. We're, we're playing for the big prize and let's jump straight into game one. All right, yeah, I'm excited to see this. Joker's a great pick, honestly, against Jackie. It's one that we've seen work a lot before. That range can really put a, uh, a pretty difficult situation uh, in the mix for her. But uh, right now, it's looking like K-Top's classic Jackie is looking very, very good. Just needs to uh, continue this pressure as much as possible. We'll see if that actually ends up happening, though, as it looks like it will. Ooh, that was a really cool way to turn things around. We just haven't seen h get anything started. Not yet. There was a chance with that flawless block. Now, sadly, he did drop the combo. However, yeah, Joker. Buttons, reach, really high damage output. There's a chance here. And there's the charging of the back forward four. We've already established there the reversal punish on the dash punch. Being able to deal with the back forward four as a clean punish. That's already forcing H-Dope to try and delay the input. However, it's now one round here for k top Chef. Yeah, pretty strong one too. Like I mentioned, we just haven't really had a chance to see uh, H-Dope get anything started. It's been K-Top's game. It's continuing to be K-Top's game with half HP gone already with that crushing blow, plus frames. Nice throw tech, but even when H-Dope builds some space, just isn't able to find anything. This is a good first start, but wow, raw dash punch punish out of the corner. Love to see it. Take the forward two. Keep it a nice and guaranteed ender right there with a forward two one. The delay, walking forward and pressing nothing until a late forward one. You just want them to think a grab's coming out, don't you? You can sense it. Well, actually, Fatal Blow is ready. One, two, one. Ooh, Ooh. misses the final hit. And that is unfortunate as now K-Top will take the first game. However, certainly not easy by any stretch. Yeah, finally, finally, h Joke got a good opportunity, and it's actually really unfortunate. Like you mentioned, uh, Fatal Blow is available, and Joker with Fatal Blow is literally the scariest situation probably in the entire game, uh, but we just never got a chance to see it come down to that. It needed to be a single opportunity for, like, a forward one to land from h Dope, and that could have been the mix-up for game pretty easily, but uh, K-Top did a great job of not making, or making sure that that didn't happen, making sure that it was just one solid little hit that was unbreakable into guaranteed victory and now the potential counter game counter pick game may start or we may go back to joker right off the bat uh, looks like we're going in same variation yep actually i, I believe so anyway we'll find out um, but i gotta say it's it's not common that the two of these go in with the mains uh, i think that to be fair actually i don't know how the two of them have been recently practicing you know, to, to, to mm -hmm. talk about what we were saying before where they play so many different fighting games there's actually a possibility that maybe the two of them haven't been as intensely grinding mk11 as of late and in that sense they're going to go in with the characters they know and that's that's a, a different element actually but truth be told i hadn't actually considered but that probably is the reason however interruption oh we're ready for those oh that is nice yeah again you can really tell just how comfortable they are in these matchups against each other we're seeing a lot of really strong counterplay but you know sometimes the you just don't get an opportunity to counterplay because you get hit and you get comboed into the corner and uh this actually might be guaranteed it whoa weird conversion that but that was wasn't sick. enough oh my god that was weird. i like what i see i like what i see 
Blink oh. it too. Oh. <laughs> Bombs on the head. Wasn't ready for that one. That was a little bit awkward right there. Uh, we do tend to see some awkward situations between people who play against each other a lot because it's always going to be the weird stuff that nobody expects that's going to hit the other person. Uh, pretty much exactly like that. And there, I think K-Top is trying to bait out the interruption on that string. Going in with the extended versions, a different version that must blow up the button input. It's a delay between the plus frame version. Now knocked down. You want to try an anti-ME, do you? Oh, so much chip! Interruption, though. Here comes h -do. Side switch. Oh, tries oh. to go for a tricky side switch, and that's fatal blow into good night. And that's now K-Top two games up here. Now h -do. He's been fighting back every step of the way, but there's just been a couple of crucial errors, mostly in execution, that is keeping the momentum from being what it could be. Either combo damage, it could be set up. No matter what it is, Katoff is not being punished as heavily as he should be, and he's just getting tons of pressure because of it. Yeah, that one in particular was very rough. That was that's one of the only situations where Joker can really easily drop a combo and be fully punishable is when you are using that forward two in the combo and tried for that that kind of cool side switch setup to win for the full forward two instead of like a forward one right there or something. Uh, but regardless, just a tough spot to be in to uh, accidentally give away that two game lead because now you have to make some really tough situations and that would have been a really, uh, I wouldn't say easy, but a really uh, beneficial spot to be in uh, as far as getting that game. So it's gotta be rough, at least on your mental. Although, yeah, we are gonna see the switch. Finally, commitment to Cetrion for the rest of this set since it is a three out of five and down 0-2. Question is, Chef, how much is it going to matter? I'm not not 100% sure. Uh, we have another character that you're going to get much less damage. There's a potential to maybe get more hits, you know, hit them a few more times. So maybe the lack of damage won't really matter too much. But uh, this is a matchup that Katop has played a million times over and has done very well against in the past. h Dope's going to have to play 200% on it. Otherwise, I fear that Katop could take this to be zero. Yeah, and it's going to need to be 600% because you're going to have to win three games straight. So uh, very, very difficult. And especially being able to consistently win three games straight against Jackie when you're a 950 health character. That's like the opportunity for you to just like get hit like twice. And you're like, wait a minute, maybe I'm done here. Uh, right now, though, the damage is starting to add up for H dope. Has Fatal Blow. Just one more conversion might set up a chip win, but uh, not going to be the easiest thing in the world. That's going to be that. And we are on match point here for K-Top. Was that a standing button that didn't come out? Was that a missed flawless block? I don't know, but either way, that's going to be K-Top now on match point and looking really good. Sadly, H-Dope just has not been able to hit that next gear, you know, that next step. I feel like K-Top was kind of in charge the moment the first round has changed and very little has changed in game three. Just need to find something big. And I mean, the problem is that with Cetron, you need to kind of consistently win. You're not going to be finding like two big combos and winning the entire game. Unless maybe one of them is like a big crushing blow. But uh, regardless, even still, uh, this is basically what you need to see. You know, as I'm saying it, this is actually looking like a really good round for H-Dope. Oh, no. But look at this. This is, oh, I want to say, almost tying things up. One more hit here, and this would be tying things up. There was no meter, actually. Just an offensive bar. So we're going to see the old BNB. And now... Now you're in the corner against Fatal Blow K-Top. That's actually really scary. And K-Top's not afraid to pull the trigger on it. That's what, historically been one of the things that makes him really scary is that he has often, and I think sometimes a detriment to him, done something on block into down one Fatal Blow. And that, <laughs> we haven't seen that in some time. I'm just sitting there thinking, we can see it again. Either way, nice and actually more plus seeing as the tornado connected a little bit higher up in the air there. Here comes h Dope, really starting to control K-Top and stopping the jumps. An anti-air, this one turns into a full combo. Perhaps we spoke too soon. Interruption though, trying to party a bit too hard perhaps, and that one's gonna hurt. It is pretty scaled crushing blow though. Still though, the second hit is going to add a lot onto that. We are now in a uh, mix-up situation. Oh, oh, could have converted that. That could have been enough potentially, but the chip's gonna do a ton. The Hell's Wrath connecting as well. Yeah, K-Top has to clutch this out. You cannot get chipped or you can't just get clipped on your toesies right there. And we are gonna see h Dope getting on the board. A reverse of momentum that truthfully looked like it really surprised K-Top. K-Top spent the entire game, even in that potential final game. Obviously now it wasn't, but 
the moment that first round began, it was it was momentum, aggression, 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 and just completely all over H Dope. And then I think that halfway through that game, there was just like a switch. You know, I mentioned that I think H Dope was struggling to hit that next gear, that upper hand, that level of almost comfort and responsiveness. It happened instantly, and oh, okay, no, never mind, never mind. I, I was looking at the character select completely wrong. There. <laughs> I saw a coat ward, I was like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. I'm hey, you know, Kotal's pretty good in general, so yeah, anything Kato could make sense it. between these two. Yeah, yeah. Though it's true, yeah. If H -Dope picked it, uh, we'd be going to the next set because that would be uh, an, an illegal You're pick, out. I think. But That's an illegal move. <laughs> uh, yeah, only only Kato would get to pick that there. But I mean, hey, sticking with the Jackie makes a lot of sense. Obviously, uh, just needs to win one of these next two games, and was very close to doing so even in that last one. Just needs to uh, not get pressured quite so hard. Oh, that's one way to play foot. See, it's just throw a person. Oh, actually tried to go in for a flawless block there, I believe, and uh, kind of just made lemonade instead. You know, I've got this opportunity. I've jumped. I didn't plan on jumping. Here comes an airborne Hell's Wrath, and it's going to be enough to create space. h Stoke now, pushing forward. Looking for a little bit more. Now, I mentioned the lack of damage. Cetrion, she has no damage outside of KBs. However, her ability to continuously get damage back to back, I think that's where she can become quite a scary character. Because when she hits you, she's not doing like 30%, 40% BMBs outside of Crush and Blow, but she can set up to hit you again, or throw, or do something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything leads into momentum, for sure. I mean, that's honestly true for both these characters, uh, regardless of which one you're talking about. You could have basically, like, just not even said which character you were talking about. Uh, but I gotta point out that this is one of the scariest interactables in the game. I always have to point this out when we're here. Uh, so getting out of this corner is going to be huge. And hey, teleport is a great way. We saw it with Macron, we're seeing it right now. And I gotta say, this Cedron pick for H-Dope is looking extremely good right now, but oh no. Oh, that wasn't a punish? That was just a raw hit? Okay. That's match point for K-Top. Yeah, the Cetrion pick has been much, much, much better than the Joker. However, uh, you've got to watch out now in the screen space. To teleport or not to teleport? That is the question. Oh, no! Where are you going? Get back here. Oh, no. And here you go. Here's the scary situation. You want to make Jackie a little bit scarier? Give her a command grab that restands. I think that's... Uh, a little bit much, but hey, there we go. You're finally out of the corner. You only had to pay over half of your life for it, and even a little oh, bit more dead. right now. You're dead. Oh, the breakaway. Yeah, could have down two right there maybe to finish things, but yeah, be avoiding the guaranteed checkmate right there was going to be near impossible. So great stuff. 2K top is going to be moving forward in the battle of the twins. All right. Uh, battle hard fought, though, for K top. I think if we stuck with the Joker, then perhaps a 3 0 was in our midst, but I think at the same time there, that change to Cetrion. Much better off, but sadly not quite enough to push forward and win the whole set. But lower bracket exists for a reason, and to be fair with how long these matches have, we've been some pretty long matches at the start of the show. I, I believe some of our, or at least our first lower bracket matchup, surely at this point must have concluded, so I'm looking forward to seeing the results of that one. However, two more matches to go. Matrix was able to take it three to zero. Sadly now, Gollywomp is out of the tournament, but uh, it's always a treat to see that Baraka. Just <sighs> got stuck in the uh, the double yep. Jackie Vortex right there. And <laughs> still potentially, there's a potential here for the three Jackies that we still have in here. Matrix now making it into the next stage of lower bracket. K-Top now going up against Zippery. And then Omi. Should the Jackie be the character of choice against Makaran? I'm not so sure. But Chef, actually, what a better opportunity now to talk about Omi versus Makaran. I assume it's going to be our next matchup here on stream. Yeah, uh, that is certainly an interesting question, kind of what you mentioned earlier. Uh, is it going to be the Jackie, or are we going to see a switch to something else? Uh, we know for sure, especially after seeing that last set from Makaran, that Makaran is quite good against Jackie, but uh, Omi has such a huge cast of characters right we've seen the frost before and uh, frost versus scarlet is certainly an interesting match that we almost never get to see uh we can see the sub-zero which is going to make it very very difficult to zone in general uh no matter who you are we could see the jade which uh, again you know against somebody who is a very much a zoning heavy player like macaran i feel like the jade would be a really smart pick just having that glow being able to avoid a lot of those projectiles but there are some options of course against it some things that don't count as projectiles some sort of just neutrals kind of spacing tools that you don't necessarily need projectiles for just a lot of stuff going on that uh is all going to be going through omi's head right now 
I'm just looking at who we might even see. Because mm -hmm. are there any characters in this roster that's going to uh, inspire Macaran to pick Cetrion? I'm not 100% sold on that. So with that in place, if you know you're going up against not only Scarlet, but you're going up against Macaran Scarlet, we have the choice between at least of the four we've seen so far, Jade, Jackie, Sub-Zero, and Frost. And I'm just thinking, I don't know who I'd even pick there because Jackie is available. However, Macaran did kind of make short work of Matrix in winner's bracket. So maybe that's out the window. Mm -hmm. You've got Frost where it's kind of really in theory a battle of range. Uh, maybe really the same effect with Jade. It's going to be a strange matchup. Matchups that we probably haven't seen all that often. <laughs> the only exception being maybe if we see the Sub-Zero out of Omi. But even then, Chef, Omi plays Sub-Zero in a unique way. Uh, there's there's yeah. really no one else that has that level of slow patience. Besides maybe Foxy. But I think Foxy's more robbery, isn't he? He's all about <laughs> just play slow because I just want to hit a, a million overheads in the game. Play slow because wants to uh, have more time to frustrate the opponent, and make them salty for sure. Uh, but yeah, Omi, I feel like either Sub Zero or Jade would be a really safe pick to start things off with. Uh, not necessarily like a winning pick, but ones that you're probably not going to be feeling super bad about, regardless of who Macaran ends up choosing. Um, we also might see again the hidden select, which is something that we saw in the first set of the day where uh, Gollywomp took on Omi. And uh, we, I mean, there's just so many options. Sometimes hidden select is kind of the go to. And uh, honestly, I don't know. I mean, it's it's also up in the air. I feel like personally, if it, if it was me uh, playing as Omi, uh, I would choose Jade because I think Jade can do a lot of the stuff that that um, Scarlet can do, but also counters a lot of the stuff that Scarlet can do. So they're definitely gonna, they would play like a really interesting kind of like mid range footsies game, but the the projectiles would be so out of the uh, the the I guess game plan for Scarlet that Jade would be able to do, for example, like a lot of air projectiles to kind of annoy Scarlet and try to make her have to teleport and then you can kind of bait those. So that's what I would go to. But hey, you really never know with any of these players. Moments away from finding out, though, I think Jade would be the smart choice. But and again, Omi confident in their own game plan, I'm sure. And Looks like we're about to find out what that character is going to be. Macaran hovering over the Scarlet. Ah, it's going to be Sub Zero. And actually, Ooh. it's going to be Cetrion coming out here versus <laughs> Omi. Oh, I didn't, I didn't mean for that to sound. <laughs> wow. Wow. No, Look, no. <laughs> Macaran has a really good Scarlet. And we've seen a lot of we've seen a lot of Jackie and Cetrion. I like the Scarlet. But that's because I'm biased and I like the Scarlet. I love the Scarlet as well, but uh, this is definitely, I would say, a, uh, a sign that the Sub-Zero was the right pick, uh, especially against the this, this Scarlet in general. Uh, it's also a man a deep free Sub-Zero, so it's going to have that option to try to counter a lot of projectiles. Now, Cetron does have the ability to kind of, I guess, throw projectiles from angles that Sub can't really just counter easily with ice balls or slides, so I'm getting a sense that that's why we're seeing a lot of this. And also, you know, you don't have to deal with the zoning if you can just get the Cetron pressure going we saw it in the last set we're seeing it right now it is working extremely well and uh macaron hasn't even needed to oh my gosh just stop that with a natural barrier off the bat and that is going to be a quick game one of the cool things about the cetrion from macaron is that you can see so much scarlet in the game plan it's uh less focused on the relentless zone it's more focused on having a few more options to play at that mid-range Whereas the Scarlet a little bit slower, and you know, naturally a character that's a bit slower, I think. Whereas the tool set is quite similar with the Cetrion. You sacrifice damage, but you gain mobility and the ability to play at a much faster pace. And I think that's why the character fits Macaran so well. But look, if you're looking for a top tier alternative to your base character for certain matchups, it's kind of no wonder Macaran has gone in with the Cetrion. Now in this position, now it's pretty even on the health. Macaran around up. Slide is going to be the bane of the existence of many Cetrion players. Slide, just such a good tool, honestly. Uh, I mean, against so many different characters, it's the fastest moving punch that you really get. Uh, and we are seeing Omi use it really, really well so far. We've seen quite a few players actually use it really well today. That's going to be a nice freeze. It's not going to be quite enough. Going to need one more mix. And I oh, thought that was going to be it, but uh, wow. just a raw down two. That's actually was really scary. If that raw down two had been ducked, assuming there was going to be a grab right there, that would have been game for Macaran. 
Absolutely. KB plus Fatal Blow to add on top of it. The way though, Love all that pressure up close. Ground Pound, the anti-air, the natural barrier. I think that was just a good read on the break to say he's going to break and then get at least some damage. Reversal Punish on the slide. At least two of those now. I do believe one more of those is going to give us the KB into massive damage. And oh, the slide to Omi. Whiff Punish, counter hit, no breakaway for Omi. And this is going to be as big as Macaran can get. Yeah, 390. This is what I mean by with KBs, she hits hard. It's just without them, she struggles. Uh oh, Chef, it's sub zero. It's sub zero. One, in, two, four. Oh no, in the death corner too. You, oh, just letting the raw jump out happen, expecting some sort of wake up, but oh, fatal blows here. Oh, 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 that was for sure an attempt to forward two into fatal blow, for sure. That is so unfortunate. But, I mean, that is the classic Sub-Zero maneuver. It's forward yep. two into Fatal Blow, and that's only going to come out on block or hit. So that is going to be a, a whiff punish there from Macaran to take the first game. And hmm, was Omi expecting the Cetrion here? That's that's what I wonder, because the Sub-Zero would have been able to compete with both characters. And yeah, I think the Sub-Zero would have been able to deal with the Cetrion too, because it's a weird matchup, Chef. I think if you ask a Sub-Zero or a Cetrion player what the matchup is, they'll both tell you the other one wins it or something like that. Um, I know that <laughs> Cetrion players hate fighting Sub-Zero, and I think it's almost entirely because of the slide. Slide, and I would say also Ice Ball, right? Like, sometimes you just true, throw, true. get hit by, like, a raw Ice Ball. You're like, oh, I wanted to throw out one projectile right here, and it was just not the time to do it. And then sometimes you're like, I'm winning the entire game, winning the entire game, because, you know, like you just mentioned, you only rarely get to see the situation that we just saw, where we see a ton of damage from Cetron. And then uh, Cetron will be like, okay, I, I hit you four times, and you hit me once, and mixed me to death, and that was that. Uh, that could be a little bit frustrating. But, um, yeah, the Sub-Zero for sure can work. That's the thing is that Sub-Zero can do it to everybody. That's why Sub Zero is such a good character. There it is. All right. Ice Ball going right through. Ah, Omi somewhat misjudging the uh, corner distance there. That slide was definitely supposed to be a little bit more damage. We know that Omi's got those. Teleporting out. Wonderful lead. Full combo. Again, only 200. This is what I was talking about. The KB is great. Without it, Cetrion, she has to chip you away bit by bit. Now grab mixing it up strong with the buttons good read in the wake up roll the trade something that in, as long as omi wasn't punished i'm sure he's not going to mind it too much Ooh, the chip oh. is starting to add up uh oh uh oh okay oh he got hit by the down one this is actually oh, oh that was a way to do it my gosh short hop over the low <laughs> poke Jeff. are you kidding me yeah that was not the way that i expected that to end especially jump two the the short hop two that is uh, not the one we usually see usually short hop three with tetron but wanted that little bit of extra range which was really smart seeing that they actually jumped over something and so macaran gonna take all of that momentum look at this over half life gone already but now it's time for the mix can you block it that's the question right one two four kb damage wake up jump this time scouted out it is what lost omi the last match with macran just saying i'm gonna hold north right here i'm out <laughs> oh, oh my lord <laughs> seeing the ice ball and just running in and doing that all right chef look 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 wait a minute. i'm be real i was disappointed I was disappointed when I saw the Cetrion because I think we've seen enough Cetrion in competitive Mortal Kombat 11 to last a lifetime. Now, true. Macaran Cetrion, different story in this series. I, I, I'm happy to eat my words because Macaran is a very defensive player, has a wonderfully talented, like the best Scarlet, the best, but Cetrion understandably gets picked for certain matchups. I'm a biased commentator, and I like to see Scarlet, <laughs> right? Especially played at that level. But here, this is like almost like a rushdown, fearless Cetrion that, let's be real, this is not normally the Cetrion that we see in tournament. Yeah, we haven't seen a single boulder, and we've seen almost no Hell's Wrath in the entire set. Uh, there's not a lot of zoning going on. Uh, let's just say it's a uh, it's a mid range. Uh, there's some Hell's Wrath. Uh, the, okay, you're making up for lost time after I said we saw barely any. But yeah, no, this is rushdown was amazing. I can't believe that it was dash up two and three. That was wild. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody go for that choice. And there's the boulders. Okay, all right, relax, relax. Go back to what we were doing earlier. We we're just talking about it. Come on. Yeah, look, I mean, Omi's hitting you with slide and full combos now. He's going back to a more traditional Cetrion, and Sub-Zero says, right, party time. Oh, definitely expecting a flawless blockable gap there, hence the barrier. 
barrier tends to get used in a lot of instances where someone would try and interrupt it. Just fill that gap and punches them for trying it. Obviously, it's unsafe on its own, though, so there is a mind game there. And now the zoning can begin. Looking for a slide. No flawless block on the forward four. My gut tells me Macaran tried to flawless block that. Overhead. Ooh. Into the fatal blow. No messing around. No games. I'm not sure this is going to be it. It's going to be 950 close. Health. 950 health means maybe. Oh. Yeah. I, I guarantee that if that was a 1,000 health character, that would have still been uh, alive. I guarantee that. So uh, the 950 health really going into play there. Again, and a big reason why you choose sub during this matchup. That damage from all the mix just adds up more and more. Right, the advancement. Knows the button's going to get pressed. Happy to commit. There's the uh, standing one once again. It's a small damage, but taken about three successful hits but eventually now half the life is done and this is what i was talking about it's, it's that snowball effect just chipping away piece by piece the forward one or the back one excuse me overhead comes out now omi the mix-ups have been pretty successful but has very rarely been in a position to enforce it the aggressor has almost always been macaran absorption Ooh, good slide though. Good slide. No fatal blow, or this would be a lot more scarier. There we go. Punishes it. Almost a bad crushing blow. <laughs> the full string force would have done it, but you don't need that there. And honestly, when Macron's winning, I feel like we're watching Johnny Cage. This is a, a very aggressive Cetrion, and I feel like it's working more than the zoning was working. I mean, obviously, it was a huge comeback for the zoning game, but you only need to give Sub one chance, and when you're the one rushing Sub down, sometimes he doesn't get any chances. That barrier has been a real pain in the backside for Omi so far. The low hits its mark and overhead. And these, as far as the overhead low game has gone, it has been highly successful. It's just, like I said, it, it's not really being in a position to enforce that. The second we're at point blank, it has so often been Macaran in the driver's seat. Let's it go! Oh. Counter hit! No break for Omi either. So this is really going to hurt. The restand into it. No flawless Ooh. block there. Omi, potentially last chance here in one of the bracket. Bit oh, the buttons. That's it. You're done. Yep. You're yeah. done. Confirm. <laughs> we in there. Macaran's going to take it now over Omi. Three to zero with the Cetrion pick. Wow, the aggressive Cetrion. Honestly, that was a very fun Cetrion to watch. I'm I'm actually a Cetrion fan, to be 100% honest. I was mating Cetrion for a while, but I do really like the more aggressive Cetrions. When people can't get through zoning, it does tend to be a little bit more boring, but I think when you see that level of Cetrion, it is quite, quite fun. And yeah, at the end there, Omi had to know that when uh, when that standing four at the very end went into barrier and didn't go into the uh, the fatal blow at the end, you had to know that they were, that it was going to be Macron fishing for fatal blow after that. It was going to be any sort of jab string into fatal blow guaranteed. Uh, but hey, you had to approach somehow, just got caught by the jabs in the end. So great stuff to Macron. Very well deserved. Moving closer to that potential trip to Evo. Looking ready. I think that that's the important thing that's that's in my head here is that I'm looking at the way Macaran is approaching this. I'm, I'm seeing the speed, the efficiency of it, um, the conversions, just really strong neutral. And it kind of goes back to what we were talking about at the start of the set where you know we know that Macaran is is known for being a a Scarlet player, the best in the business, for, you know, as far as we're concerned. The reason that works is because it's the neutral, it's the defense, it's basically anti-airing anytime there's an opportunity immaculate with punishment having just the spacing in your mind to the finest detail for all these different matchups that's how you make scarlet work you can take those exact same fundamentals and apply them to cetrion and get very similar results and it kind of makes sense as to why there is that cetrion as a secondary for some of these matchups now our next matchup though likely to be noob cybot versus jackie that is true. We have seen actually these two play not that long ago in um, a fight night, and that was in the end what the matchup was. Uh, this is a matchup that can do pretty okay uh, for Noob. You know, this is despite the fact that of course Jackie is Jackie, Noob is definitely not out of the uh, the game here. And of course the players that we're talking about, we might as well talk about the players. <laughs> I'm jumping too far forward. I'm excited to see who wins this whole day, but that's going to be Zippery going up against K Top, of course. Uh, now K Top, I would say. Uh, 
Um, actually, I don't know. I, I was going to say K-Top, maybe the favorite to win today. Macaran very much in that running as well. And really, anybody could win. Uh, we are very much in a spot where literally anybody in this tournament could win uh, pretty easily. Like, it wouldn't be a gigantic upset. Maybe for some of the players that were, like, a little bit more new to seeing, just because we are new to seeing them. But with the level of skill that they've all really been able to exhibit, uh, I wouldn't be surprised for anybody to win. But K-Top, you know, pretty much one of the top dogs. Uh, top, you know, K-Top for a reason. Uh, so being able to overcome this would be pretty gigantic i think for zippery but when i look at zippery play too especially seeing as if, if memory serves they have they played recently right we mm -hmm. were doing fight nights nearly a week ago or so yeah ten, like 11 days 10 days a week and yeah. a half pretty it recent it was it was an interesting result because i think zippery just looked composed you know mm -hmm. when when the noob cybot is able to lock you down and has the down four anti-air ready to go the, the small little conversions it's all great um the difficulty will always be what do you do when k-top gets point blank because his layers of rush down is often where the majority of the success comes from because he's just so good at, at mixing you up and acknowledging when you're going to squirm on defense and throwing in just the the right amount of regular grabs to make you worry about it uh, it, it's a rather scary package, and uh, he's so devoted to being point blank at all costs. That's where Noob Cybot can really work against that. Zippery has shown us many times the anti airs and the matchup knowledge, it's all there. And even things down to like up clone and the universal moves, Noob Cybot at range is good at fighting Jackie. It's just what you get when you're point blank, and the Jackie player is mixing it up in layers that most players aren't doing. Yeah, yeah, uh, K-Top, I mean, the thing is, anybody who's been playing uh, Jackie for this long, right? We, we, when we started seeing, like, upgraded Jackie, there were a lot of players that were playing very, very similarly. But now that we've gotten this far into the game, uh, anybody who's committed to the Jackie for this long has to have created their own style. Because if you go and just do all the classic stuff that Jackies are kind of expected to do, it is honestly, I don't want to say easy to counter, but people will blow you up for it. Oh, of course. <laughs> Oh, no. Leaving right as we see that. But people will absolutely blow you up for it, right? They will give you, uh, they, will, they will show you exactly how the matchup en tends up to, uh, ends up working if you're uh, predictable. And so K-Top, for example, is very different to like the Omi uh, Jackie that we saw earlier today. Omi playing a very, very patient kind of like zoning Jackie until the moment appears to kind of jump in. K-Top has some really, really great pressure that uh, we, we see just K-Top being a very aggressive player in general. So, uh, yeah, especially once K-Top finds that one opportunity, it can be so hard to get out, harder than a lot of the other Jackies, I think, that we see. However, I'm looking at Zipper and I'm just thinking, like, if he's playing that really solid game that we know him mm -hmm. for and have seen over the last few months, really, um, it's, it's if you can keep K-Top from doing that. Like, if, if you can prevent K-Top from essentially being in his element, his element is point blank and yeah we've interviewed him in the past on playstation tournaments if i recall and uh, i think he even said in that interview he was like yeah i don't like playing neutral um he was very <laughs> he was very self-admitted he was just like I, I don't really like playing neutral but i like rush down and i love mix-ups so uh granted that was a, a few years ago now so maybe k-top has a, a different outlook you know from then but i know that the characters that can somewhat get around that. That's why we'd seen the Cabal in the past. We'd even seen K-Top play Terminator previously. Like, mm -hmm. we had seen K-Top use Terminator before for the exact same reason. Um, so there's, there's a lot going there. I think Jackie just does that the best. But that's definitely something you can use to your advantage if you know that's how the opponent plays. If you know they are so focused on rushing you down they hate neutral they might be a bit impatient and i think k-top has shown that in the past that k-top even now can sometimes be a bit of an impatient player noob cybot is one of those characters that can really eat you up for doing that because you know, if you're impatient against noob cybot he's gonna add yeah you with every button in the sun uh he's gonna do massive combo damage he has very practical crushing blows it's just a good character for, for countering that, I suppose. Obviously, apologies for the delay, by the way, as, as you could clearly see, actually, when we loaded into that match, that we did have a disconnect from one of our players. So I am going to assume we're having a few lobby issues. Um, but as always, rest assured, as soon as the match is ready to go, we'll jump in and we'll continue the tournament. It's just sometimes these things happen.
<laughs> yeah, K-Top really making his way today, uh, saying, you know what? We're going to take as long as possible yeah. to get to the end of this road here, trying to extend these Mortal Kombat 11 tournaments for very much as long as possible. I'm excited to see uh, once MK1 comes out those tournaments, but um, I'm glad that we're still here doing some MK11 this long in. Trying to remember what life was even like before this, back in Injustice 2 days, very different age. Uh, and yeah, it's just it's wild to think about all that's happened over the past few years But um, I'm glad that we can see a lot of these players that we're really familiar with, you know uh, We've talked about it before but K-Top and H-Dope of course have been playing since uh, Really competing since like 2000 like 15 in Mortal Kombat X So they've been around for a really long time It's really cool to see uh, these players that like kind of stick around throughout multiple games And we get to see how they've grown as players and also kind of as people because they were very very young when they were first playing of course as we tend to see a lot of the players in the NRS seeing being but uh we could see them a lot of them kind of uh, grow up and become even stronger players which is pretty terrifying <laughs> it is the level of play from generation to generation just seems to skyrocket i mean look no further than the chilean twins scorpion prox and nicholas uh it's unfair how good they are at this game mm -hmm. to be frank um and you know when we're, we're talking about you know this being the road to evo this is all about evo this is the biggest fighting game tournament in the world a rich history with countless fighting games mortal kombat being no exception we kind of look back at last year last year's evo was an incredible showing to this day in my opinion i absolutely think that last year's evo was like in regards to stories and the level of play and everything else the best mortal kombat 11 tournament in history uh, i strongly strongly believe that evo was that tournament for mortal kombat mm -hmm. and the stories simply continue this year because the last couple of years people have been asking can anyone beat both of the twins in the same tournament right that, that's something that no one has done yet no one has been able to do it rewind came close rewind got halfway there last year <laughs> uh, but wasn't but able to, another. To, to close out yeah but that, that's the problem with them you can't just beat one you gotta beat them both and they both basically play as good as each other and are of top three in the world level so it's like i'm not surprised that no players have been able to take them both out yet <laughs> It's, so maybe it's like it would be one of our players, right, from PlayStation tournaments. Hey, I would love to see it. I would love to see like Macaran or something or K Top. But it. you know what's funny? I just thought about it. Like every time that you you have to run into the twins in bracket, like towards the end of a bracket, it's like you have to bracket reset them, even if you're in winners, right? Because there's two of them in a row. Oh, that's tough. Um, but yeah, that really truly is the storyline. And I agree with you. I think last year was like the coolest Mortal Kombat top eight that we've ever had, especially the top eight. I mean, the whole the whole tournament was great, but that top eight in particular, I mean, I was out there, you know, doing uh, in-house commentary. And that is the first time that I've ever in my entire, uh, I don't even know how long, how it's, long it's been, like 12 years of like casting or whatever. First time that I've ever lost my voice because I was screaming so much. I remember we started off very first round. We saw a like 90% comeback from Sonic Fox. And I was like, oh, this is about to be the most wild top eight that we've ever seen. And it was. Uh, so I'm excited to see kind of like the, the follow up to that. You know, I, I mean, that would have been a great final one, but I'm really glad we get to kind of sort things out for one final one and be like, all right, yeah, who can beat the twins? Uh, are we going to see other names? Are there any other big names pop up? I know that currently like at CE, which is ongoing right now we're seeing like euphoring take like uh pretty much everybody down without like losing a game so there's definitely a lot of names that we could see that people aren't as familiar with that we could uh we could see like making a big jump up there were players last time too like even like han rashid that we saw doing really really well so there's still definitely some storylines in uh in store for mortal kombat 11 and a lot of it could be based on what happens today right uh whatever european manages to make it or whatever europeans ideally i would love to see every single person in this bracket make it to evo but of course not always going to be very feasible i sometimes i live four hours drive away and sometimes i can't even afford to make it to evo but uh let alone a 10 plus hour flight so ideally i'd like to see them all but you know one of these players is going to have a really really good chance of going to evo and that alone is going to be a, a big uh wrench in the plans of everybody else that's there and let's not forget, too, that this is just the European side of things. Later on tonight, we're going to be jumping into North America. 
and the North America tournament provides the same experience. So there's you know, the potential here for two players at least being able to make it through. Um, and two players good enough to win a stacked to hell online tournament. Uh, that's a player that you would be worried about in the tournament itself. Especially if it's a player that has that combination of like online and offline experience, it becomes a very different story. I think some players that have played so much online, they're gonna maybe have a hard time conquering those nerves because mm -hmm. look, when you play a lot of online and you make that adjustment, it starts to feel very real very quickly. You know, you're on the plane, you're in the venue. I mean, you're in Vegas, right? Most people that have gone to Evo for the first time have probably never been to Vegas before. Like, it's a huge shock to the system. And then you have to play good. <laughs> then you have to yeah. keep nerves in check. You gotta conquer the jet lag. It is a monster, but one worth, to, you know, really getting used to. And here we go, the game's ready, yes! For finally, finally, you know, like I said, Kate's not really making us wait today, but uh, that's uh, that's what that's what we got to pay to be able to see who's going to make it to Evo. Now, Zippery versus Ktop, we're getting the exact matchup that we expected. So pretty much all the stuff that we talked about is going to be pretty exact. We're going to see if Ktop can keep it solid and find his way in and then just keep that pressure on. Or if, uh, you know, he crumbles a little bit, allows a few too many opportunities and the damage comes out of Zippery. I think Katoff is already looking for that one moment, right? Mm -hmm. Going back to full screen, patiently waiting. And oh, just a, a, a straight up jump in, spending both <laughs> meters on the shrapnel blast. The side switching throw. It's going to provide some Oki. That is actually really scary. Um, the fact too that you can you can spend your defensive bar as Jackie in this matchup to get a further jump in, but that means that if you get punished, you are donezo. You are taking so much damage because you can no longer break away. So um, you got to really, I guess, like balance the risk reward of how you use all of your tools in this matchup and your meter, which is uh, not always the biggest thing you have to worry about as Jackie, but this one for sure, this matchup. Oh, jump back, maybe looking for an edge there. I do wonder if that jump back too was buffered into a uh, air teleport or something. However, fatal blow. Now it's used late in the combo. However, we'll see if it's going to be enough to seal the deal. I think it looks like it definitely should be. Yeah, that's more than enough. Boom. That combo. It is surprising how low the scaling is by the end of that combo. But at this point, we should not be surprised by Jackie. Uh, any amount of damage that she can do. Um, but still, good, good choice to use that right there. There was no other real way to guarantee that win. And hey, when you got that, you just use it for sure. Oh, that will be an absolute conversion. Uh, with punish. Gonna whiff that button on me, point blank on wake up, then I'll make you pay for it. Oh, speaking of whiffs, almost paid the price for that one actually. And yeah, misses the punish though, and that's the problem. It's a really good idea, however, it can easily go wrong, right? You miss that combo, Jackie punishes you now. Thankfully there, Ktop didn't have the extra meter, otherwise that would have been the end of the game as is. And actually, no, the 1-1-2! One, one, Zippery was looking for maybe something else. Punish! And now the plasma on the floor. Ah, uh, it's unfortunate. Zippery went in on wake up with that pressure. Like, I'm going to do 1-1-2. One, one, if that was a 1-1-3, one, one, it would have been 1-1-3 one, one, into Fatal Blow into the yep. next round. Yeah, one one three really almost into, into quite a few options right there. Would have at least been able to, uh, you know, do more damage. But yeah, easy one one three fatal blow. We've actually done it from Zippery a few times, um, just in previous tournaments where it's been like either when the one one two comes out, it is pretty heavily dialed in, and we've seen a lot of times where the full string connects, and all you get is just that knockdown. So uh, it might be one of those things that Zippery needs to kind of work on is like the hit confirm on that string, just doing one one, and then waiting to see what happens, and then the three or the two which can be a little bit late, can be a little bit tough sometimes, but hey, you know what? It's, it's, a, it's a lot of damage to lose out on by auto committing to what you want right there. Well, there's plenty more matches to make those adjustments. Get yourself a little bit more acquainted to your opponent here, K-Top. Zippery, they've gone head to head. Last time we had a fight night, if I recall. And I think that it was very back and forth there as well. Mm -hmm. It was a matter of who was in control. The control so heavily differs on the screen. As if it... Whoa! Wow. Thankfully, the forward 2 2 1 was able to actually get him out of a bad situation. <laughs> I was fully expecting that to be a full combo for Jackie. 
That's the uh, the classic thing. I love when you watch people walk away from danger with normals, like the old Garrus uh, 2412. Two not yep. old per se, we just don't see Garrus quite as much recently. Um, or many. Oh, different other options. There we go. Going for the crushing blow off the bat. Yeah, there's going to be immediate breakaway. But that means the next hit is uh, honestly probably death. But actually, next hit's instead going to go to Zippery here. And no defensive bar. So this is going to be max damage. Chooses even to spend meter on the slide as well. Combos that Zippery tried in the first game and sadly dropped. I'm glad the confidence is still there to go for it. You know, a simple mistake. Yeah, it gets you punished, but certainly worth constantly going for the damage otherwise you're just leaving so much on the table aren't you a big jump in k top or oh, zippery must have expected a grab or something else that wasn't that because now k top's going to get himself another round on the board zippery back against the wall however is there a teleport in our future no that's the worst <laughs> feeling in the world you hate to see it and i hate it when i used to play the cyber i hated that yeah, and that was just so much confidence from K-Top as well. Just like, you know, I know exactly what we're doing around start here. I'm going in. Oh, and there we go. Uh -oh. KB number two. And this is going to be no defensive bar, which is a the worst time to not have defensive bar. Uh, that's going to be a huge amount of damage. But wake up buttons. There is defensive bar on the other side. Are we going to see the breakaway? Nice. I love that. We see that K-Top is no longer going to be doing the breakaway right after that one single hit, making 100% sure that there's no back two coming. It's one of the reasons the back two can be hard to use is that a good player can often just wait. You know, they can see that it hasn't been used there. We'll press grab now as a three. So much of this stems from a delayed wake up into a hard, dedicated 113. It was, I'm going to delay wake up, you're going to press a button, it's going to miss, and this is going to work. It was a huge, huge risk. Some might even say foolish, but it was enough to completely catch him off guard. Now look, the round's up on the board and potential to equalize. Well, who's the fool now? But <laughs> no, well, it depends, I mean, hey. depends if he wins the game or not. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Uh, yeah, we will see that. No! It's looking, <laughs> things are looking a little rough here for Zippery. Uh, this is finally a way to get out of the corner. The 1-1-2 one, one, is going to be a nice little way to build some space. And now we're going to see Kayla have to get in. Nice. Ooh, turning things around. All right, this corner damage could be huge, honestly. No defensive bar for Zippery, though. So one hit could honestly be it if it happens pretty quick so much defensive respect being shown by Zippery and I like that the forward throw that's going to be escape failed Katop was absolutely convinced that oh no this is unbreakable this is unbreakable chef no, no. oh Zippery set up as well like back to the wall and chose to do forward throw because it's so unlikely that Katop was going to tech in that direction it gave escape failed Mm -hmm. Noob Cybot crushing blow on both grab directions too. Like that was such a good idea. Sadly though, those jump ins, they're killing him right now. Yeah, and of course at the end we get to see the uh the Jackie classic that I always always talk about about how she has some of the best guaranteed damage in the entire game. Uh it doesn't it matter if you have defensive bar, she's gonna get a huge amount of damage, and sometimes if you break away even uh it's late enough in the combo that it's just honestly a good thing for her. So that's uh, that's pretty tough. And on the other side, Noob usually has to get rid of their defensive bar before the real damage happens. Of course, there can be some nice little uh, like conversions, some crushing blows, some whiff punishes. But overall, for the big combos, including teleport, you really need to get rid of that defensive bar. So it's kind of like you're working twice as hard. You got to get two combos for the price of one. Looks like there's been a variation change here from Zippery. I think we'll see how much this is going to work out. Back one into the low slide. And ah, the spirit ball this time. Let's make a pretty... It can make a big difference. It does decent damage for what it is. It's more plus on hit than you might expect. And it's quite fast. But overall, we'll see if this is actually really going to help out. The slide always returns, as you would expect. It's just so core to many noob cyborg players. Grab now, reverse throw. I mean, the Spirit Ball worked out really well just right there. The fact that that wasn't a slide, it was a Spirit Ball instead, meant that Zippery was able to block uh, the the Far Leap instead of just getting comboed basically to death. So, so far, I'm, I'm liking the change, but it's not going to matter. That's going to be Fatal Ball, Bye. and that's going to be the round. <laughs> Such is no. life. Death again. More of that Fatal Blow. Here comes the Drop Kick, and now K-Top on the match point. This. Ooh. You know, I'm not going to speak too soon, but there's a potential winner's finals that we haven't seen in some time. 
that's true uh i would enjoy that but you know what we uh we gotta see you never know what could we happen here. yet yeah uh, we definitely don't want to curse it we are very good at cursing these types of things and now there's no defensive bar the jab Misses the that would have been a punish that would have been huge that's really unlucky unfortunate that could have been uh, i mean really like over half of k-top's life with no defensive yeah. bar at that point well hopefully this is not something that zippery's now going to be looking back on and thinking oh, that because this is that's a game-changing moment that's damage that set up that opportunity expected one shrapnel blast in that case there were two looking for the one one two in reverse oh, whoa wake up down two oh shouts to week one mk11 everyone was doing it myself included punish no fatal blow no fatal blow and then uses it when it's so unlikely to connect with punish oh, no that's it. no zippery the game was in the palm of your hand or at least the round was oh great it's that friendship i've seen a thousand times thanks to k-top alone <laughs> come on k-top do it again <clears throat> k-top has sold so many of these things or bought maybe so many of these things probably got to buy a you know chronica like i don't even i don't know what these are technically called the things that never fall down but um yeah, probably has uh, had thousands of them uh, himself. So that is going to be a 3-0 for K-Top. Zippery, that's a, that's a rough way to go. Again, had the fatal blow. I do think that that's one thing that Zippery uh, in general as a player um, could work on a little bit more is just hit confirms, right? Knowing that that could have been the situation to just fatal blow, get, take the win. The fact that we saw the 1-1-2s that were connecting over the 1-1-3s when it could have been a win from those. A lot of different situations. So uh, that's just maybe one of those little things. But again, Zippery is not out and played amazingly in that set yeah. we can uh, actually take a look at the bracket to see where zippery's gonna move down to well it looks like h dope was able to defeat starks three to one and that now means omi versus h dope and then zippery versus matrix juna now our winners finals finding out who's going to be in grand finals for the minimum 200 dollars prize although as i really should reiterate for this tournament not to undersell the rest of the prize money that first place is what these players care about you know, that's what they're mm -hmm. gunning for because it is game changing being able to attend the evo uh, representing europe representing yourself uh, in the biggest tournament probably of your life uh, that that's the big number one so winners side of grand finals being able to get that uh, whoever wins and winners finals is going to be feeling pretty good now while we set things up we are going to go to a break thank you all so much for watching just remind everyone to stay in in touch and get involved in social media compete.playstation.com all that good stuff but in the meantime while we set up winners finals here is a break i totally did that too early didn't i <laughs> i did i saw i saw the lower third i saw the lower third and i was like they can't do it now can they i've totally just set them up I've totally production, everyone take us away production save us save us <laughs> see you in a bit everyone sorry <laughs>
Gaming is defined by moments. It is intense. The joy of victory and the thrill of overcoming challenges. Welcome to our home of competitive gaming, where we can all experience exciting esports moments. The final 1v1 of the game here. And celebrate the pros and the rising stars. I do want to see a, a female in the MCS. Bringing you guides and deep dives. Horizon can go up, but she can't go up fast. And tournaments where the community competes. Wait! Did he no go? way! <laughs> Whether you're in a heated match, Back, let's go! Or watching along at the edge of your seat. A duo taking down a trio. Let's create moments from the games you love. Come take it! Join us and subscribe to our channel to follow everything esports on PlayStation. PlayStation. And welcome back, everybody, to the PlayStation Tournament's FGC Arcade Road to Evo. We are here with the European side of Mortal Kombat 11, and we are about halfway through the bracket to see who will win that care package to help them gank their way to Evo this year. I just also want to remind everybody that you can check out the YouTube. The YouTube is going to be PlayStation Esports. That is now the main home for any of the competitive PlayStation uh, videos that you want to see there's a lot of guides there there are a ton of recaps if you want to just see what's been going on on each of the games over the past month and of course if you want to check out broadcasts like this as well that's it's all going to be so check that out for sure but uh, i want to see what i want to check out is what's going to happen in the rest of this tournament today isn't that right ketchup it is and a quick recap this is the road to evo if you're wondering what that means, EVO is the biggest fighting game tournament in the world, and it's held once a year in Vegas. Uh, although, technically, there are there is now EVO Japan, so that absolutely must be considered. But uh, when people generally think of EVO, I think they do really tend to think of the, uh, the Vegas event, of which mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat 11 is a part of. Hence, here we are, doing a tournament, trying to figure out which of these players has a really good chance of making it out there to represent Europe and compete in the biggest tournament of their lives so far. It's Macaran versus K-Top in the winners' finals. So <clears throat> my gut says Scarlet, but we've seen we've seen Macaran use both of his characters against mm -hmm. Jackie in the past. I think it, it must be so heavily player dependent. It would be nice to see Jackie versus Scarlet because when Macaran is playing well, he makes that matchup actually look really, really good. Like, the damage, the conversions, the anti-airs, the defense, it's all working in perfect harmony. And that is Macaran all over. It's what makes him such a, a legendary defensive player and, in our opinion, the best Scarlet in the business, right? I mean, K-Top, opposite end of that, wants to get in, wants to rush you down wants to get into that next round of the tournament as soon as possible. <laughs> wants to get into that next round because so far it's taken K-Top uh, like 10 minutes per game to get in the actual lobby. <laughs> I think it's taking K-Top longer to get into lobbies in this <laughs> tournament than it is for him to, to just get through his opponent. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, no disrespect. I just mean that, you know, K-Top's a fast player. And I think we're spending more time waiting for K-Top than actually having K-Top play. Which, that's just hilarious to me. I love it. It is, it is, but uh, yeah, we we're just we're just poking fun. We all love Kate's up here, we're all friends. But um, what was I about to say? Oh yeah, yeah. So this is actually the matchup that uh, I've seen before. Uh, I think it was the player matchup where we've seen Macaran a long time ago really go for the Cetrion to try it out against this, and then once they switched back to the uh, to the Scarlet, it worked kind of better. Uh, maybe just because of familiarity. But I do feel like more recently, more than ever, the Cetrion for Macaran is looking extremely extremely good especially on its offense and when you want to just lock somebody down scarlet doesn't really have that opportunity right scarlet sets up these like spacing traps and forces you to whiff buttons and then whiff punishes them with these kind of like auto time footsies options but you can't always do that against somebody who's 
option is just going to be to jump a lot of the time or has amazing footsies tools like Jackie tends to, uh, tends to have. So I feel like the Citron could work out pretty well. Uh, of course, we saw that earlier on today, trying to lock down that Sub-Zero, uh, which did work really well. And I think it's kind of a similar idea. Like if you don't want to be on the defensive end of a lot of mix-ups, then you got to be the one who is controlling the offense. So uh, again, it's a toss-up for me as to which we'll see. Definitely, though, Jackie versus Citron, a match that we've seen a lot in the past i'm kind of just looking at how uh i wonder what it is in particular that makes macaran decide whether to go with either of his two characters because when, when i think about that and, and i think about what he's uh, often bringing to the table i almost wonder if it's like how comfortable are they with the scarlet because if the scarlet doesn't work so good because they've just figured out that matchup to a fine detail there are a few players i think um, that have been able to push Macaran to that limit, and I think someone like Mirko has been able to do that previously. Uh, I can't quite remember if Ktop has, although I know they've they've played many times before. Um, <clears throat> but it kind of just comes down to how well does the Scarlet work? Because if they if they don't know the matchup to a science, there's a lot more he can do that works out for him. You know, it's. Maybe he can get away with a little bit more things. Maybe a few more things on block could go unpunished. Maybe they're not as good at flawless blocking the character, perhaps. There's a lot of different things that make Scarlet either work really, really well, or then instantly, just with a little bit of knowledge, she starts to struggle. That's why she's not considered to be such an amazing character. Uh, easy to think otherwise, though, when you see Macaran in business, because uh, I think that's the impressive thing about him, though, isn't it, Chef? Is that... She's not a popular character, and she's not popular for a reason. She's not considered very good. You look at Macaran play, and you're like, yo, are we, are we talking about the same character here? <laughs> because it doesn't look like it, but he's having to work so hard to make it work. Yeah, basically plays perfectly. It's uh, really hard to kind of undersell how um, how just strong Macaran is at playing Scarlet. But it's true, exactly what you said. A lot of times people don't have that competitive experience against Scarlet. And if they do, oftentimes it's just against Macaran. Uh, and so some, maybe you might not even... Okay, so let, let's take this in layers, right? So first of all, if you even know how to fight against Scarlet in a competitive level, you need to know, like, the flawless blocks and the gaps and the strings, and you need to know the mind games behind it because often we see the dagger dance as, like, a parry option mid-string to avoid flawless block into, uh, like, reversals. And so there's already that, and then knowing how to get around the zoning and dealing with stuff like that, how to poke back after strings, that's level one. But then there's level two where it's, like, Mortal Kombat 11 is not a game where you can like learn specific flawless block timings and not practice them at all. It, it's one that you have to have a little bit of practice all the time for all these matchups. So let's say you you know this stuff, but you never get to play against Scarlet's because who the heck plays Scarlet? You might just be out of touch with that timing and not be able to kind of get it back mid set. So uh, it, a lot of things can go your way uh, with Scarlet. You can't actually bully people if they don't know the matchup or they're not good at the timings of the matchup. Uh, but then once they are, that's when things start to get a little bit suspect. I've actually just been informed as well that there has been an off-stream result taking place. Matrix Juna was able to defeat Zippery 3-1. to one. So Matrix now is one step closer. Officially in the money. Well, actually, to be fair, all eight so, players are yeah. in the money, but it does distribute a bit differently. Um, but the top four, one step closer to that top three, which, look, I don't need to continue that talking point because you're yeah. just getting closer and closer to grand finals. Um, so a good result still for Matrix. And... To be honest with you, Chef, this is kind of what uh, we were talking about at the start, where when we saw Matrix play in the first matchup, it didn't really look like the Matrix that we're familiar with, where yeah. maybe there's, it could have been nerves, could have been the pressure of it was a, a bit much and thus caused mistakes. It could have been one of the slightly less common things where you're playing completely fine and you feel fine. <laughs> But the moment you sit down, you play, it's on stream, and the <laughs> tournament has started, everything just goes wrong. You mm -hmm. get hit by loads of stuff you never get hit by, you drop combos, and it's a disaster. And it just so happens, because we've all had that, right? Where you'll, yeah. you'll play against someone in a fighting game, and it's like you feel fine, and nothing weird is going on, but everything that can go wrong goes wrong in the match. And sometimes that just so happens to be on tournament, on stream, 
That's the <laughs> worst. That is the worst thing to happen. And I've seen it before. Oh, it's, I've just been informed we're getting in the match too. Oh, okay, okay. So now that we've uh, we've seen how long it took for K-Top to get into this lobby, we can assume that it's going to be, uh, we can time that out and do a little bit less for how long the set's going to take. Uh, if we go by the math, like we were talking Stop about. Stop watches going. <laughs> Stop watches going. <laughs> <laughs> on a serious note though folks thank you all very much for your patience uh you know shout outs to production for really getting us in as fast as possible and, and doing what you can and uh thank you to the people at home for sticking with us it's time for winners finals and to reiterate winner of this makes it into grand finals winners side it's the ultimate comfort zone and with a trip to evo or at least the means to being able to make it to evo on the line i mean come on that that's uh that's a hell of a comfort zone right there that is you do not want to uh, give that up this is i'm really excited actually that we're gonna see the uh the scarlet i'm very very excited this is really what you want to see just everybody putting it on the line like you said with what they're the most comfortable with and now it's time to see if it works out or not so far it's been uh, just kind of slow neutral uh ooh, nice anti with the far standing too i've said this before macaron one of the best anti-airs in the entire game uses I i've seen like five different buttons in one game and tiring at five different angles that is just classic macaron okay top a lot more opportunistic of a jackie player than we've seen so in this kind of matchup, you know, the moment the offense is starting to be laid on, it's a different story. K-Top gets the knockdown, K-Top makes a lot of reads, covers a lot of ground with various plays, and that is where Macaran might have a slightly more difficult time. I think the likelihood of things hitting in the neutral, <laughs> I was about to say, lower, <laughs> and then the boiling point just hit its mark. But hey, that's only one. That's only one so far. K-Top has got to be careful now, though, because you do not have the health to play with. Oh, yeah. With. Oh. yeah. One little hit here could be it, but now it really could be hit on either side, as we know that Fatal Blow can close things out so well. Good patience. Knows how they have to block after that. <gasps> Did he commit to the string? That forward one would have been it, guaranteed. Just needed, I mean, honestly, didn't even need the Fatal Blow at that point, but also just had it for safety. Still didn't commit to the full forward one, and that was everything, but here we go. Making it back already in the second round with a raw jump in advancing button a little back dash just to try and trick you into thinking it's safe to do so lovely throw tech there from macaran oh tries to outspace that jump in but oh the parry as well this is it you want a flawless block that is the kind of only reason the parry is ever taken by elite level scarlet players they want you to flawless block and by doing so the parry beats it clean Yep, that's the, the, the high level, the layers of mix-ups, the layers of just even playing this game. Uh, but, I mean, Nakran is just so used to having to play that game that uh, he tends to get that right a good majority Punish. of the time. Ooh, there we go. This is a good way for this to start. K-Top just barely in that Fatal Blow territory. So, uh, like, basically, like, maybe two more hits could do it. Or if we get a few more little tiny hits here, now we're potentially one combo away for sure. K-Top. I would say put himself in the corner with that throw. Oh, that was it. That's <gasps> it. No, no, never mind. I'm looking at the wrong health bar. I am stupid, folks. I thought the fatal blow was ready. No punish. No punish. An overhead. Macaran oh. bet it all. Game one. Emotional second round. I was absolutely looking at the wrong fatal blow meter. I was like, I... that's got to be a confirm. Oh, wait, hang on a minute. Wrong side. Oops. You know what's funny? I think it actually could have been it, but... Uh, but because there was the damage over time on the ground, I think that pushed Macron into Fatal Blow, like right as that was happening. But Macron wasn't confident that that was going to happen. So it was really close to around that time regardless. It might have happened. Uh, still, though, managed to make it happen. I, I do like the fact that we saw that overhead. I got to point out was right next to the interactable, the low interactable, that spear that nobody ever blocks. So might have uh, assumed that it was going to be like a walk up into spear interactable and just wasn't even thinking about the fact that uh, Scarlet has a strange overhead. Well, I think just the risky nature of it, the fact that it was just punished with a full combo beforehand and it being the one that ended the game uh, just... I think showing your opponent the tenacity, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid to continue doing something, even though you punished it, I'm still gonna take that risk assessment in this instance. Now, Macaran 
placement of those overheads has been almost surgical with the exception of one. And even then, that was just K-Top making a good call. Grotex in the first game, a wonderful chef. Are we going to see more of it in this game? The first one was unteched. I guess we got to see if we even get close this game. <laughs> close enough to grab. Uh, whoa. Ooh, look at that max range overhead. I think I actually hit later, like in the frames because it was so far away. Maybe making it more reactable. Oh, all right, here we go. Full combo in the corner. Great conversion. That is a lot of damage. And Whoa. honestly, this could be the rest of it if there's no breakaway. Oh, not even going to attempt it. Oh. Just letting it happen. Out of the corner, but dead. That was an uppercut that did not work right there. I tell you what. Oh, my Lord. Tries to add the air and Chef. And then, oof, the whip into the round ending combo. Scarlet. Gosh, she does so much damage. Okay, top. A risky play. Put everything on the line for that throw. And I don't mean the damage, I mean the positioning. K-Top, lovely air to air. I was worried for him for a second. I mean, just to get the successful grab, put himself against the corner, which is either corner pressure for Scarlet or screen space to work with. Thankfully, though, fighting hard in that next round and very comfortably now brings us into a final round for game two. Very, very quickly, very, very qu quick and convincing, like you said, uh, and looking to try to start the same way in round number three, trying to get on board at least. Ooh, wow, immediate down one into parry. That was just a nice little uh, grab. I don't know if there was a punish right there, but maybe grab punish. And now Matt Grant in top spot in the corner, has no defensive bar, oh, but nice teleport. teleport. That was, that's exactly what we want to see it used for in this matchup. Anti-air, tries to bait out a breaker, quite. Rightly so, K-Top, no breakaway to be had. And I like that parry attempt too, that K-Top didn't break. Macram was thinking, surely then you're holding onto your meter to flawless block my pressure. But no, still nothing. K-Top seeming really hard to mentally break into here and to make the decisions against now, Macram. Oh, I assume that was meant to be a flawless block. Oh, either way, a, a whiffed advancing button as well. And now one game apiece. Even game right now. Yeah, I uh, that, that is what we tend to see when we see the uh, the short hop twos in a uh, in like a weird defensive situation, which does tend to work out all the time. It's really funny. It's like the best accent you can get. But uh, a lot of times we do expect that that was a flawless block into an up to that. There was just no attack to actually flawless block. So um, not exactly what Macron was looking for right there. Got one little hit, but wasn't enough. The flawless block for sure would have been able to at least start some sort of pressure and zoning and build back some more space. But just getting a knockdown, I think, uh, wasn't quite ready for it. So we are going to go to game three as we're one apiece here. And uh, this is looking like this could be a bit of a back and forth set. K-Top really did adapt well in the, that last game after Macron really cleanly took that first game. Uh, but this is, uh, this is going to be a long set for a reason. I think I would be surprised if we don't if it goes any other way because these are two players that you know like besides the obvious yeah masters of their character and seasoned in the levels of experience let alone in PlayStation tournaments as two of our more regular attendees it's, it's, it's in their nature to have these insane back and forth matches mm -hmm. Especially for, I mean, such a huge match getting that you mentioned before, of course, winning, getting the winner's side advantage of Grand Finals is uh, one of the biggest pillows that you can get, especially when you're trying to use that pillow for a flight to EVO, potentially. Oh, great anti-air. Didn't get the full string to connect. The full 2 on 2 string actually whiffed. That would have been a lot of damage. Still, though, Macran is holding on to this very solidly. Problem is you can't just even give one opportunity, and unfortunately, one that one opportunity is right there. One leap is all it takes, and that is why Jackie players will take the risk and they will build their game around it. One successful leap and it bypasses the neutral. Oh, court pressing buttons and the breakaway falling point. That's going to do so much damage. Oh, uh, just a casual 375. Yeah, that's why you're really scared to break away right there. The launcher in that like combo string is also the armor breaker. So it's a little bit awkward to try to break away there. But also, if you don't, you take a ton of damage. So it's just not an easy situation to always get a read on. K-Top, unfortunately, not choosing the right situation right there. Oh, definitely think there was an attempt to anti-air that, though. But the leap had other plans. Here I come. Ooh, again, expects the breakaway. 
they're really brawling now. I feel like there's a lot less uh, reserved play as we've gone a little bit further into this uh, this game in particular. This is game number three. Uh, look at this. We're just we're seeing Macron push forward, trying to get some corner pressure. We're seeing K top. Uh, okay, finally going back to a little bit more patient and nice air to air. But overall, I still feel like there's a little bit more of a brawl. Great punish on the landing frames right there. No breaker. Oh, there's the pickup. That's going to do so much damage. Now, Fatal Blow is ready for Katoff, and no doubt going to be eyeing that up. The combination of the Blood Ball, the tentacle, <laughs> potentially messes up your flawless block timing. Oh, this is so scary. Oh, oh the flawless block. So good. And then the down one counter hit. Katoff absolutely pressed something there. And it did not work. And Macaran up two to one. A chance now for the Scarlet to be Grand Finals winner's side. Macaran, you've got to keep your head in the game. But this tournament is looking very, very achievable for Macaran right now. Very achievable, yeah. I mean, so far, running through a lot of the strongest players that we've had. And uh, this Scarlet is looking as strong as ever, if not stronger than ever. It it's so hard to get the normal Jackie pressure to work on Macaran. Right there, we saw the Flawless Block on the down was such a good option. Uh, just being able to say, okay, well, I know that I Flawless Block this. So now, and it was the second one as well. So that, like, I know I can just guarantee this down one. We just play it safe. We play it patient. And uh, we just make sure that we don't take any unnecessary risks. Because one unnecessary risk against K-Top at uh, that amount of life was, uh, it was literally a one hit kill if, if uh, K-Top was able to find the hit. So Macron just needs one more to make it into winner's side of grand finals. It could all be in the balance of this matchup. Tentacle's not going to hit this mark. Oh, wow. Asma at that range. Risky business. Walk up. Oh, Macron. So content letting K-Top make that first move. Whenever there's a standoff, the patience. Punish on the up three, though. And there we go, massive damage to kickstart round one. And K-Top now pushing real hard towards this corner. Protect, Macrad, good choice. I like the use of one, two as well. It pushes us so far out that it does make jump, it makes jump attacks with, sorry. Oh, that's that for sure. Easy peasy, K-Top looking to tie things up. We might see our first game five in winner's finals. But again, that wouldn't surprise me between these two players that have gone back and forth so many times over the years now. Years, I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's true. <laughs> when we say years, we normally mean multiple games too. This is MK11. Four yeah. years, mate. Four years. A long time to refine. Oh, tried for the whiff punish, but that forward, uh, the second hit of forward one, two actually like stopped the start of a forward two. Jackie has some really good buttons, believe it or not. I think everybody believes that at this point, uh, but that is of course a chunk. Scarlet used to be one of the characters that, the, the character that got the least damage in the game off of jab. If you would jab, you would literally get the least damage with Scarlet. And then they introduced custom variations and now she's one of the highest damage off of jab in the game. That's a fun all fact. It took, all it took was the ability to just swap one little move, one little move around anti-air. We're not going to get max damage. Yeah, they did sort of mess with the gravity of that combo, not getting the full 2-1-2. Two two. Yeah, a little bit low, a little unfortunate, but I mean, still you're safe. Could be a lot worse. Oh, point blank! Projectile to steal that life too. But you know K-Top's got that fatal blow. One of the best fatal blow users in the game. But look at this, they're stealing so much life! Don't. Happy to stay mid-screen as well. That teleport was everything. And now it's going to be Macaran here, Chef. Match point here at the winner's finals. It's Scarlet. Oh, the whiff up two. That is a heartbreaker. Yeah, you hate to see it go down that way, especially because now you no longer have defensive bar. But, oh, manages to poke out. And again, just solid, unbreakable damage off of every single hit because of Boiling Point. That move, yeah, it added so much to her kit. Just an unbelievable amount. Uh, and I know that's been a few years since that happened now, but I just love talking about it. Oh, the second hit of 1-2 uh, hitting. That's actually huge as well. Macaran, like you said, just needs a few more hits. This is close. Anti-air. K-Top, the impatience is setting in and it's jump upon jump upon jump and actually jumps again! I can't believe it! K-Top gets anti-air <laughs> twice in a row and then jumps three more times and it worked! Jackie Briggs. It's not over yet though. It's not over yet. Still needs one more hit. Oh, the sending one jab into oh, the wall! Oh, fatal blow! Doing it right back, 
saying, nope, I'm ready this time, never again. And Macaron is going to move forward to the winner's side of Grand Finals. That was four jumps, three of them anti-aired, one of them worked, but the most important one was that final one where that was just so much damage to be rewarded. But good stuff to Macaron. A close set as we expect. I would be pretty surprised if we didn't see K-Top back in the grand finals later, but uh, you never know with everybody that we've got left. I gotta say, I gotta say, jump anti-air twice, jump about three <laughs> more times, <laughs> but then the game-winning play was the fourth jump being anti-air after the fatal blow. There's, there, there's, there's a, it's poetry. It, it's, it's fitting that that would be the way it goes but that is not the end of the tournament that just simply means we have one of our grand finalists locked in let's take a look at the bracket and we'll figure out who remains in the tournament and how much more matches we have left to go so omi defeated hdope three two in the lower bracket matrix juna taking out ziffery three to one and actually matrix defeating omi three zero is that Ooh. Oh, okay. Quick update. We do not know the reasons. Hopefully everything is okay. But Omi was in a position that he had to forfeit the match. Omi was not able to play in that top four matchup against Matrix, which means that Matrix and K-Top will happen in Losers Finals. So I want to say shout outs to Omi for making it this far. I know that Omi's a super long time regular here for PlayStation tournaments and uh, I simply hope that Omi is doing okay and is all good. But that does now mean we're going to move on to our next matchup, which is Losers Finals. Uh, and now it's going to be a Jackie Mirror. There's been a lot of Jackie today, Chef. There's been so much. There has certainly been a lot of Jackie. It's kind of feeling like the days of old. But uh, the, the good thing here, for there's, it's good for one particular person now, right? Which is going to be uh, Macaran, even though Macaran's not in this Losers Finals. Because Macaran has now defeated both of these players and uh, defeated them both. Not even not even in like a game five, right? So whichever of these players wins gets that rematch and it's going to be a tough regardless. But the Jackie Mirror, you know, actually, I haven't even seen the Jackie Mirror in, in a little bit of time. It's, it's gotten a lot more rare over the uh, past few months, I would say, as we're seeing a lot more characters that are kind of like character loyalty characters. So uh, if anybody wonders what this light is like, uh, just look up. You're definitely going to uh, need to see a chiropractor because you're gonna be looking up in the sky a whole lot of the time. Uh, but honestly, patience is a big deal here. So we'll see how this plays out as we see who's gonna make it into that top two. There's a lot on the line. And I mean, as we can clearly see from the bracket, Matrix has been on a tear in that lower bracket to make it to this point so you know the final boss of the mirror match in a sense fighting off against k-top who has been in here a lot more often and a lot more regular uh, if you can take out k-top in this matchup i think you're gonna be feeling pretty good going into grand finals but you gotta beat him first Oh yeah, that is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, of course, you also in your uh, your interview that you had with K-Top, which may have now been years ago, uh, K-Top talked about how going down to the loser's bracket makes him stronger. He starts to like really feel like, okay, the time is now, and this is where I like really need to get serious, and things just feel more real, and that's what we're seeing right now. So loser's bracket K-Top, a whole different beast, infamously, uh, and so being, <laughs> being in the spot is not gonna be the easiest thing in the world. However, Matrix Unit with a good start for this second round at least getting caught out by that instant leap you know i guess the question is you know, you're both so familiar with the character you're familiar with the options offensively and defensively so what are the small details that make the difference in a mirror match like this okay top you're getting caught out Whoa. that should be checkmate at the very least yeah there were two bits of time on the floor thoroughly expecting that now one round apiece okay k top looking to try and push forward here Matrix taking that last round. Yeah, I, I'm, you know, I'm actually surprised that we, we stopped seeing uh, the dash punch enter into instant blast setup. I was just thinking about that earlier today. Uh, I really want to see that set up more because uh, that was a really cool way to guarantee that people were in pressure uh, in the corner. But we just tend to see a little bit more normal Oki as time goes on, uh, especially from these players. K-Top, of course, doing so well. Wow, great anti -er. anti -er in the way that uh, he lost the, the, one of the games in the last set. So definitely know your own uh, weaknesses. And uh, that was a way 
right there as K-Top is going to cleanly take this third round and uh, take the first game of the set. I feel like the, the back and forth in this is going to be a bunch of one-sided rounds, right? Like, if there's a back and forth, it's going to be because, like, it's just dominated around, the other person dominates around, and then one of those two dominates around. I have to agree with you. I, I can't see it being this, like, a back and forth on a round-by-round -round basis, like, in the round itself, because it's it, these are two... Two players so momentum heavy. Mm. Um, like, look, Jackie, she's a snowball character anyway, but these two in particular, the rushdown, like, they put forward really leans towards that, I think. I think if one of them gets a hit, that's the round. Uh, that's a very long winded way of basically agreeing with exactly what you just said. But, hey, <laughs> let's now jump into this next matchup and see if that exact same thing is going to happen. No, I do, I do think that what you said, it does make a lot of sense, right? I was talking earlier about how every Jackie who's still a Jackie player has kind of crafted their own um, play style, really. And again, we look back at Omi's play style with Jackie earlier in the day, and it was very, very patient. Uh, but these are not the patient players. They, they usually are patient to get in, but when they don't have to wait to get in, they just kind of go go wild, right? Like, that's their styles. Nobody's really going to sit there and try to, like, wait out the other one unless they're near, like, a guaranteed checkmate situation. So it's just going to be brawling. And right now, K-Top is two grabs in. And that's the thing about K-Top. He does just enough grabs to make you think about it. And when you're thinking about it, you're hesitating. You might try and press a button. You might try and text. You might not be blocking. And that's all K-Top often needs to open up that offense. Now, speaking of offense, here comes Matrix. No meter, sadly, to extend that. However, a respectable amount of damage near the corner. And now with a life lead. K-Top looking to open up the lead instantly. Enough, though. Advancing buttons. Ooh, down one on block into counter hit. Matrix definitely tried to press back-to-back -back buttons right there. Delay into the mid. Good block there. No anti air. The instant turnaround, and there's the fatal blow. 950 health character, Chef. I think that's the end of the round, mate. I think as well, there's a good chance that it was. We saw a, a cool little attempt there, yeah, definitely. Yeah. There was a cool little attempt there from uh, Matrix to do a late breakaway to punish the full, I think, 4-3-1 grab string. But we actually saw K-Top not complete the string, which is really smart. And that'll happen in like the, a fragment of a second, literally a fragment of a second. So just something cool a little to point out in how fast this match moves. <laughs> this is wow. <laughs> this is a lot of patience all of a sudden. Very different uh, change of pace. They're daring each other to make the first move. Neither player wants to swing first. If you swing first and it gets blocked, you're minus. And if you're minus, you don't want to be there. And I think that's almost one of the elements. <laughs> that they're both like, you go first. No, you go first. No, you go first. Oh, Ooh, that was a huge whip. Not punished at all. That was actually really scary. Whoa, weird anti with forward three. That normal kind of does everything. Nice, beautiful down one again. We can see that uh, the the air blasts are very counterable by K-Top in particular. Like he's just sitting there waiting for those a good amount of time. I think Matrix Jr. has to really be careful of that. Absolutely. There's the advance from the All right, a full combo, the breakaway, and the breaker actually putting K-Top in the corner. Not that it matters as a side switching throw instantly challenges, lets the button go stand alone. K-Top, a bar of offensive meter left to go to get even more damage for this combo ends it in a knockdown looks to push forward again it's gonna be a mid this time answering back now as matrix fatal blow spent on round one so he's not gonna have it at this point tries to trip guard a bit too late oh that's a confirm and there's no breaker for matrix that's absolutely gonna be the game and a two to zero for k top who looks hungry for the run back against macro yeah, this really has been the back and forth that we were expecting. But the problem is, if the if it's a back and forth, then the person who won the first one ends up winning the game. And now we are two to zero in favor of, of K-Top. So uh, you can't let it go that back and forth, you know? I mean, it's nice that Matrix June has been able to take a round in every single one of these games, but uh, you need to make it at least two or you are going home in third place, which is still pretty good. Uh, like we mentioned, there is a considerable more amount of money on the line here in general than most of the fight nights. Everybody gets prizing that made it into the top eight, but you get even a little bit more if you were within that top four or especially the top three. So uh, Matrix June is at least going to be able to get that money guaranteed, but you want more than that. And to do more than that, you are going to have to win three games straight here against K-Top, and in the mirror, that could be tough. We saw signs of this delay um, right there. You know, you'll notice that 
uh, Matrix did not instantly rush into the, the character pick again because look, back against the wall and you have to do a, a pretty big feat to move on into grand finals there. If you need to take that small breath to refresh yourself and get more back in the game, do it. This is your last chance. Lower bracket. There are no second tries. And whoever wins this now moves on into grand finals on the lower bracket side to face off against Makaran, who is looking on fire right now. K-Top starts off strong on an opening combo. Decent damage. Both bars of offense were used. Even down there, even knowing the jump into overhead was coming. Like you'd have to be a Jackie player to be that ready for it. And Macron's looking on fire, but Juno was also looking on fire for a little bit after the plasma hit. Uh, sitting there glowing, taking some damage over time. All right, the throw out is not going to give any Oki, but it's at least going to build a little bit of space. And it does look like Major Juno is going to play a little bit more defensively this time. Not necessarily working, but it is definitely a good thing to attempt. The crushing blow used right off the bat, and uh, that's going to guarantee at least this round and match point for K Top. Major Juno was on the back foot there, trying to play a little bit more defensively, throw out a little bit more zone but in the end it just didn't quite work oh had the the counter hit right there but didn't commit to the full string again we've seen that a few times the reversal throw the beginning of what's going to be needed to be a lot of stuff if matrix wants to push forward and take this one tries to change the jump arc there with the shrapnel blast doesn't really matter reversal throw there's a lot of damage on the floor to potentially get knocked into. Delicious anti -up. Nice! Oof. Good use of the ground projectile too. Ending it in the side switch, knowing it's going to take enough damage, and now oh, one round damn. apiece. Chef, this is a chance for Matrix to do something. Yeah, I don't want to curse this, but it has been round three. Oh, wait, what just happened? What? The Matrix just did what? Wasn't pressing anything. That was a little a bit hit. weird. Yeah, okay, definitely not a control issue or anything oh. like that. That was just a late breakaway. Sure. Again, it's an attempt to, to bait that full string, but K-Top is not falling for that at all. No. It's so smart. Not at all. And unfortunately, though, a lot of resources spent on a decision that did not work. And now Matrix Fatal Blow is ready. But oh, landing in front and a full combo. That's a clean 3-0 for K-Top. And revenge is in sight. We're about to start our grand finals now, of which K-Top, the final player to make it. <clears throat> only one of these two players, only one of these two players has a chance for that hospitality package. The high likelihood of a player making it out to EVO to compete in Mortal Kombat 11, to represent Europe, to represent PlayStation tournaments. I mean, I've got to be honest, as we now get in, before I say anything, shouts to Matrix Junior. Top three is a fantastic finish. Um, and some of the best showings in PlayStation tournaments I've seen from Matrix. Um, mm -hmm. Arguably ever, to be honest with you. Uh, I know Matrix has, has been rather hit and miss with these. Uh, you always know that the talent is there. And this kind of tournament, with this kind of competition, very, very good job. However, Chef, I feel a bit sentimental about this. Because these are two players that are... Fair representation of what European Mortal Kombat on the PlayStation Tournaments platform is. You know, mm -hmm. they're highly talented. Uh, they are greatly successful in their own right. And this tournament has that first place hospitality package, which, as I've said, and I will say again, incredibly likely the winner of this tournament can make it to Evo. Mortal Kombat 11 at this point is four years old, and these players have. Macaran has been there since day one. K-Top had to miss about the first year due to life obligations that I shall not get into here because it's, you know, irrelevant. Um, ever since we started to see the rise of PlayStation tournaments, these two have been there and they've been there the whole time. Now, only one of them is going to have the chance to compete at EVO for this game to represent the platform. And mm -hmm. it's like, it's, it's like, it's as full circle as it gets if you ask me and it, it couldn't be happening to two more deserving players like these these are two players that have worked hard to be where they are and now uh they're going to compete in grand finals and it's it's, it's really <laughs> nice to see there's, there's no other it way is. for me to say it you know i'm, I'm waffling obviously but it's a great yeah, moment. Yeah. no, no it, I, absolutely it's 
Uh, I mean, I mean, behind the scenes, for people who haven't been watching these PlayStation tournaments for a long time, I mean, the back of the beginning of these PlayStation tournaments for Mortal Kombat 11, uh, technically we were both there. I was behind the scenes, but Ketchup, uh, you know, of course, was here on broadcast. And uh, it, was, it was like the start of like this, This, it, you know, was going every single week. There was just been, t- there have been tons of these over the course of the past few years. And, you know, now we're getting towards the, not to say there's the end of anything, but it's, it's we're towards the end of Mortal Kombat 11's life. So uh, this is the game that really, you know, started a lot of, on these PlayStation tournaments. Uh, and so seeing these players that have been doing so well here, it is definitely a little bit of like a, like a cool full, full circle moment. And it's also two players as well that I feel like I really enjoy them like as players, as people. I root for them in every single tournament. Now, of course, I can only root for I can root for them both right now, but only one of them can win. But I do think this is a great way to kind of close this out. And either one will be an amazing representation uh, of this kind of like not only the European scene, but also like the the sub European scene of the PlayStation tournaments European scene. Uh, they're going to represent both of them very well if they do manage to make it. And ideally, hopefully they both manage to get to Evo in one way or another. I would really love to see that. But uh, like you mentioned, only one can win this care package from this FGC arcade arcade road to evo and i'm glad that we've got these two here in the grand finals very opposite play styles very varying characters very different different characters that they want to try to play uh but both great uh representatives of the the region and the scene now i do believe it's kind of like what we've had all show long where basically <laughs> as soon as as soon as we have our players in the lobby good to go um, i can only assume it, it's it's just unforeseen you know uh, yeah, I, thank you very much for letting me know production. We, we're just waiting on a on a player to be ready, um, and it's 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 been the day of that, isn't it, Chef? Yeah, it, it's been the day of it. But there's only one more matchup left to go. So as soon as both <laughs> of our players are in the lobby and they're ready to play, we will conclude this tournament. And tell you what, while we're here and we're chatting away and we're having a good time, let's just get some stuff out there that we've mentioned at the start of the show, right? Um, there's a lot going on in this event and the players have had to work really hard to be here and now it's about to commence Macaran versus Ktop. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. I want to remind you all that if you like what you see and the idea of sending someone out to Evo is a good idea and you like how it sounds, we have North America after this. So, stick around when this show is done because we have a fresh new top 8. Ooh, that's exciting as well. I'm excited to see who makes it from uh, North America. Obviously, a little bit of a less of a trip, but still going to be huge for some players who cannot afford it. But here we go. One of these two players at the end of this set is going to make it. This is going to be Grand Finals. Macron in the winner's side. So K-Top is going to have to win a full set and then reset the bracket to win another set. So that's going to have to be six games altogether for K-Top. Macron just only needs to win one, but let's see who is going to win this this Evo care package. All right, starting off strong for Macaran, who was already able to establish impressive range. However, in doing so, is back to the corner quite quickly. And I think Ktop hesitant to go in because the teleport is always an option for Scarlet, especially with this variation. Plus yeah, we- Ooh, wow. Ooh. I- I- I love the usage of the uh, the meter fireball there. It's actually more plus on hit than the uh, normal fireball. It's a fun little fact for everybody else out there. Uh, and of course, it does just get you back some life, which is going to be huge because you want as much life as possible against this uh, monster of a damage character like Jackie. And there we go, the unblockable spear. Not actually unblockable, but nobody blocks it. I like the use of it too, because Jackie's not exactly known for having massive range on the ground. And that spear certainly competes with Scarlet, and no wonder it kills Macaran off guard. Low, amplify. And the damage and the heal combined has now given Macaran the lead. However, the Fatal Blow is locked in and it's no doubt going to get spent now. Spend the two bars, boom, yep. Fatal Blow. And now K-Top, one round up here in our first match of Grand Final. All right, easy, <laughs> easy first game. No, definitely not easy. <laughs> this has already been a brawl back and forth between the two. And already K-Top has had to spend resources. Of course, like I said, you spend that fatal blow when you can. Uh, Jackie gets to, uh, you know, get some good opportunities. But if you can close out a game with it, that is 100% the time that you want to do it. So uh, no longer is going to have that for the rest of this set. Macaran's going to have a little bit of advantage in that aspect at least. But also just in the life aspect as we're getting into round number two. This is a little bit more what we saw in the uh, first set of matches. Ooh, the jump back, jump one. Keep counting how many different ways Macron anti-airs. 
I do like the use of boiling point after a grounded blood ball because like it's not gonna combo or anything and yeah it can catch them if they're not blocking for whatever reason but what it is gonna do is just add a guaranteed hit of chip you know it's gonna mm -hmm. make that blood ball will just do that extra one or two percent more than it otherwise would speaking of damage here comes a lot boiling point hits the mark and now we're gonna jail it in some more whipping the dash punch and not only taking that round but pushing macaran slightly out of the corner and an opportunity to fight back at range can I point out something really genius exactly based on what you just said? Uh, so we've seen Macaran doing Boiling Point after the Block Blood Ball a lot. And the second time, right after you said that, um, because that first time was actually blocked, or sorry, Fall is blocked by Ktopt, who's now getting calm in the corner. But they actually, Macaran changed it to the Tentacle instead to change the Fall is Block timing to guarantee that there would be more chip. Super smart. Again, minor little moments like that are what turn these sets around. But right now, it's a pretty big moment for Ktopt as this has been a pretty runaway round. Back-to-back -back buttons and the trades in this instance goes in for the boiling point just in case I'm going to assume there might be some heals at some point down one into the tentacle full screen now And you'd think this is bad for Macaran, but with two bars of meter and a fatal blow and Jackie being 950 This is more than winnable folks more than winnable Oh, yeah, I mean, especially with the potential of chip, right? Like, this has already been a lot of chip, but even if this Fatal Blow connects as, like, an anti or something and doesn't kill, which at this point it almost basically will, uh, you still have the chance that you can just chip out for the win. Look at this pushing all the Fatal Blow! And I think that's going to be it. Oh, that absolutely. is just one of the, still, the highest damage Fatal Blows. And wow, just like you said, it is actually a pretty good situation for Macaran, who now is up a game and still in winners, of course, of this Grand Finals. Let's quickly remind the people at home the double elimination and what that means for grand finals. Macaran is now one game up. However, Macaran being on the winner's side is yet to be sent to the lower bracket. If this three out of five that you're watching right now goes to Macaran, tournament's over. However, if Ktop wins this three out of five, Ktop will send Macaran to losers and we will start again. Hence the term bracket reset. With Macaran being one game up here, there are two left to go. Two more wins and Macaran is going to be the champion just like that. Gosh, I'd be so excited to see Macaran, or I mean, or K Top, of course, at Evo. I'm just excited that we get to see one of them potentially. Hopefully, hopefully everything works out for us travel for everybody. Again, obviously not the easiest thing in the world. Far, 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 far from it. Uh, I've made the opposite trip just a few times, and already I'm like, you know, that's enough. <laughs> uh, but regardless, this would be so exciting to see either of them make it. And this is uh, still a Probably a pretty big brawl of a set. This came down to the wire last time. It was 3-1, but it was very, very close 3-1, one of the closest sets that we've had. And uh, I would expect it to go the same way, especially with K-Top. Like I said, getting closer and closer to losing in a tournament gets stronger and stronger. Kind of has a, uh, a revenge mechanic built in. However, Macaran is playing extremely on point and motivated right now. Yeah, I know K-Top has just been able to get in and get a clean hit, but... Uh, it has been a hard-fought battle every step of the way, from when they fought earlier to when they're fighting now in Grands. I mean, Macaran, Protect on point. The use of projectiles have been fantastic as well. Ooh, in that instance, Boiling Point just hits outright. And now the Fatal Blow. That Fatal Blow changes. Oh, oh my... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh no! no. It what? Went backwards! What? what is that? I don't think I've ever seen that happen, and we have watched so many Jackie matches. Okay, I'm glad that K-Top pulled that one back yeah, because I'm not that would have been a huge heartbreaker. Well, I, that is so weird that that jump attack went backwards. I think it was jump two. I actually didn't even see. I wasn't expecting to have to look at what that jump normal was, but uh, whew, that was a scary situation. I. I would not have felt good for K-Top if the round got lost on the back of that, because that was a combo that she's looking the wrong way. She's just looking the wrong way. There's no other way to describe it. However, enough of that, I suppose, because we're going straight into another round of which Macaran hits a boiling point in the ground over half-life already done. Roughly 60 or 70 percent left now. And whip punish. Ooh, oh, standalone button. There's another boiling point, Chef. One more solid hit, and that's going to be an equalized game. Yeah, I uh, think this is going to be a really tough one to come back from. No more Fatal Blow. You can get some damage, but you're going to have to get a lot of damage without uh, yeah, a single hit connecting. And uh, maybe just expecting Raw 1 and 2 right there, choosing to swing back, or maybe expecting 1 2 into uh, like the parry right there. Regardless, the read wasn't it, and we are, like you said, equalized, but now not quite so equalized. Oh. Look at that one hit in a bowling point just does a chunk of life. That is literally like oh, almost one third of Jackie's. Yeah. 
I was about to say the exact same thing. I mean, it's it's the stressful nature of, yes, Scarlet has got to work incredibly hard in this matchup, but at the same time, the damage is so unbelievably good in comparison. I mean, Jackie, she normally hits really hard anyway. Escape failed. I like that choice from K-Top goes in for the less likely throw direction. Now, archering back. The block in. The jump in, sorry, respected by a lot. With that oh. was so nice. The standing two actually like steps her back slightly and made the attack whiff, but that's not gonna matter. This is gonna be one to one. K top staying solid right there. And uh, I do think that we're gonna see a close grand finals here. Whether it's a reset or not, I feel like it's gonna be close. Macaran saw the neutral jump or the jump there from K top and with the fatal blow locked in, I really think the plan was to just go in there, do some kind of anti-air or some kind of whiff punish. And that fatal blow absolutely would have taken the game. I just think getting hit in the process of it definitely wasn't part <laughs> of the plan. Uh, but it is going to lead now to 1 1 situation. Uh, nice play there from K Top because, I mean, look, you're going up against a character that's going to hit you so unbelievably hard and has anti airs for days, has flawless blocks for days. The important thing for K Top is that he's not being deterred from playing the way he wants to play. Because the he, second you stop yeah. that, he, Macaran has complete control, right? Right, yeah. You you need to kind of stay in the game. You know, you need to apply pressure regardless of where you are, even if the pressure is like the threat of something. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you just essentially get run over the other direction. So this is uh, this is. I mean, it's it's tough. It's a it's a it's a back and forth. I, I really feel like it's just about who's gonna get the better reads in these situations because neither of them is like missing anything. Neither of them is like getting uh, beaten by one particular strategy. It's just that they've played each other so many times. They know how to fight this matchup in both directions. And who's gonna make the right reads? Oh, once again, another time that up two just does not work. The hitbox. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> And no breakaway. No defensive bar at all. Oh, 444 damage. Okay, that is almost half of the HP of Jackie. But oh my god, this is just a back and forth of these huge combos. Nobody even has that much of a lead right now. Macaron's starting to, uh, I mean, get into Fatal Blow territory, but uh, one hit away really from either, and that's going to be the hit that lands it. That was a round. Sheesh. I think again, it comes down to K-Top being just confident and, and not afraid to continue to do what he wants to do. Besides the fact that Macran has this sort of defensive brick wall and you're going up against someone that has the damage that Scarlet is bringing forward. Oh, tries to whip punish. Wow, in that case, just advancing 1-2 and that's going to be huge damage in return. And actually, I've got to point out, so many of K-Top's throws have been working out because every single time he's doing a throw, he's doing the direction which is technically, you know, in brackets, the wrong one. He's throwing himself into the corner. He's throwing, he's in the corner and he's throwing you away from the corner. Like you would think he'd never do that, but you're not gonna tech in that direction. And it's giving him <laughs> knockdowns that lead to so much more. It's really smart. Yeah, there's so much risk reward just even in that little throw game, especially when you're a character that has a crushing blow throw. Uh, but oh my gosh, so much size reach. Oh, that was an attempt to follow this block up two again. And for sure, I think we need to stop seeing those. We've seen now two that there's been nothing to block and two that have whiffed over the course of their past two sets in this tournament. So the flawless blocks, maybe just not it. Maybe take a more proactive approach. And I think Macron's gonna start realizing that uh, because that is now just too many times the flawless block up two hasn't worked. Advancing button once more. Down one works out. Staggering the offense, trying to catch you out just a little bit. Good defense there. Ooh, anti-air, but can't really get much from it. Whips the overhead. Can't get the whip punish, though. K-Top, marginally too far away. Fatal blow locked in for Macaran. And again, the meter. We have seen this in game one. No anti-air there for K-Top. This one's going to do big damage. Boiling point It's going to set things up now with an extra bar of meter for either heals. Boiling point itself. K-Top, afraid to press buttons. Has to show so much respect, because at this health, even at this health, oh, Macaran... Oh. That was the game. If he just dedicated to the string, that was the game. Didn't have confidence. I like that one hit stagger though. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It's just, hey, sometimes you gotta have confidence in your own choices in neutral. No, the down one doesn't connect and K-Top taking game number three. I honestly wonder if Raw Fatal Blow right there would have worked. It might've been stuffed out, but the down one that's been working so well after those blasts, just not quite working out. And you know, if that had hit, that would've been Fatal Blow into death. It was looking for it the whole time. Macaran was fishing for it, and 
the one individual button there, the advancing low or mid, I can't quite remember, has the two hit string attached to it. We're, it's so easy for us to sit and say, oh, you should have dedicated to it. But that wasn't the plan. The plan was individual buttons to make Katop uncomfortable so he would eventually crack. It's just in this instance, he didn't crack once. And when it was his turn, he took full advantage of it. That was really good defense. Defense from Katop that we're not used to seeing, I must admit. Yeah, I mean, you can tell it's, it's down to the wire for both these players. Like, they are 100% putting their all into this. And like I mentioned before, K-Top, the closer you get to the end of a tournament, the close, stronger he is just in general as a player. So this is uh, this is really going to be stressful. And not only this, uh, not only do these players like have to kind of put their all in right now, they have to see how long they can go putting in their all without getting kind of gassed because there is a chance here, you know, now K-Top just needs to win one more game, even if it's in the next two games, to reset the bracket. Then they have to do this whole thing again. And if you've used every Everything that you've got, all your tricks up your sleeve, then uh, you're kind of out of luck. But nice wake up buttons. That's gonna about to tie things up. Big damage. Now we're gonna give Macaran the lead. Full screen lead. Those have actually been a bit of a problem for Macaran at the moment. Is just you know right as something is pressed. Here comes Ktop with the lead all the way from full screen. Punish or maybe more expecting a button to be pressed there. Don't think it was much of a reaction. Oh, no full conversion off the down one. That would have been it for sure. Uh, still K-Top in his tough spot, but only as tough as uh, the fact that you've only got a little bit of life because one hit could be it. Is this going to be full conversion? Of no, gets the pick up again, though. And that is going to be the round. K-Top now on reset point. A weird little re-pick up, but hey, you know what? Whatever works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, they say. And that's now going to be a reset point here for K-Top. If this round goes down, we're starting again. A fresh three out of five. And that comfort zone of Macaran's will be officially gone. If for Macaran's sake, really would rather win the tournament kind of right now. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Oh my gosh, that was the furthest air-to-air -air trade I've ever seen in my life. The jump normals, the jump one with uh, Ma Macaran or Scarlet, and the jump two with uh, Jackie are like the furthest range jump punches. That was very funny looking, but here we go. K-Top getting low life again, and once again does not have the fatal blow now going to the rest of this. Made the right read with that down two, expecting the breakaway, so now things are tied up. That's as quick as this can go. K-Top just needs this round, and the reset's going to happen. There's a throw tech. Has sent on the anti air there, I think it was Macaran. K top. So many of these. Oh buttons. my gosh. It's just the chip damage piece by piece. <gasps> Breakaway there. No defensive bar. Oh, the flawless! And that's the round! And now things are looking a lot scarier for K top. I mean, Macaran still only ties things up if they manage to win this, but uh, that was a really, really good read. No defensive bar on either side, and both really wants to be able to break away. But uh, oh, wow, the, the actually the tentacle whipping. That's huge, but the hands are huge as well. Could have got maybe a little bit more there because no breakaway, but did manage to get at least a good chunk here as K top's at about one, or one third life down going to the rest of this round here we go again that blood ball is going to hit its mark and again no reason really not to amplify just in case it connects it heals you It'll provide you with the extra frames to work with as well macaran establishing so much dominance and distance but now here comes k top point blank exactly where he wants to be picks up the entire string 18 percent just like that and then the advancing mid into oh. both bars of me are spent doesn't get the ender no more fatal blow and no more offensive bar is going to be the big issue here. Oh, breaks, catches a breakaway. This is going to almost wow. be it. That is going to be so much damage. Didn't have the meter or that honestly would have been chip damage away. K-Top needs to find the hit. Double flawless block. Oh, there's the jump over, but only has one bar. It's not going to be enough to down two catches. They're so low. Oh. That's the reset. That is the reset bracket. We're starting again. Three out of five. Both players now in the lower bracket and only one chance left to take the tournament. So K-Top now takes that over Macaran. We're starting again. The reset has happened. I mean, oh. look, with what's on the line, you kind of yeah. expected it. 
Uh, I do, especially from K-Top. I expect that uh, this is going to be uh, the spot where K-Top is just at 100% neuron activation, like going into this, just like, whoa, this is everything that I've got. And I'm going to throw it all out right here. That was honestly such an amazing way to close that out. Reading the breakaway, oh, we're going to actually see the Cetrion. Last thing I was going to say, reading the breakaway with the down two, and then the down two actually hit, knocked out of the corner, but K-Top still knew how to follow it up to get the guaranteed damage over time on the ground. Super genius. Great way to reset the bracket, but this is going to be already a pretty different game in Grand Finals. And a change to the Cetrion. We have seen from Macaran already, though, that the Cetrion that Macaran brings is a little bit different. It's a little bit more rushdown focused, a bit more at that sweep, almost mid-range to fight. However, K-Top starting off instantly with the big gun. Getting a full combo, pushing towards the corner. That barrier. Again, a matchup that K-Top has played many, many times over, but everyone plays these characters just that little bit different. Big jump in. Oh, wow, K-Top. I'm not sure that was. Must have been a different button that wasn't what we just saw. Yeah, almost 100%. Uh, all of that down jump surprise didn't even connect. Oh, catches the second blast in the air. And I do got to say, okay, well, actually, hold on a minute. I was about to say, it looks like K-Top's looking even more comfortable in this matchup. Of course, with uh, we know the H-Dope playing uh, Cetron quite a bit right now. And uh, definitely, they, they, you know, this has been a matchup that uh, most people have played, but especially if your training partner's played it. However, Matt Grant's turning this around very quickly. Like, during the course of me saying that, has evened things up from a very strong... Uh, deficit. So hard to whip punish at this distance as well. So much damage on the floor. A big leap in this no one. The final no hit. K-Top spent every ounce of his resources on that final shot and that is going to be enough to take the first round. Oof, yeah, just barely though. I mean, it felt like Macaran like literally was bringing that back and just wasn't quite able to fully... Whoa, made the heavy read with the air boulder. Uh, not going to work out, but... Still, I like to see the attempt happen. K-Top, though. Oh, my gosh. K-Top is looking to just hold on to this momentum and is going to do so. The breakaway to prevent the crushing blow from happening, but now you have no defensive bar and still took a ton of damage, and you're going to have to deal with the Oki. So everything going K-Top's way so far. Which punished though, standing one. Macaran. A little bit of an opportunity here. Again, as we've said before, this is going to be a very different matchup because there's a, a similar level of space control and neutral being played and Macaran trying to be the one keeping K-Top at arm's reach. The problem you're going to have is way less damage up. Now, K-Top, one to zero. And now, in the lead. Ooh, yeah, for the first time, for the first time in this tournament has the lead overall on Macaran. Now Macaran's the one who's gonna have to fight from behind. I don't know if the Cetrion's the pick. I did feel a little bit like the, the Scarlet was doing uh, a bit better, but it might be one of those things where it just takes some time to transition over. I think the biggest thing you gotta know is that you just gotta commit. You gotta commit uh, pretty soon. You know, obviously you lose one more and you're 100% committing, but I kind of feel like this is the point where you have to say, you know what, I'm confident. I'm gonna stick with this. Both the characters can work. But uh, just got to say, I'm going to put it all in line for this one. And it is going to be the Scarlet. I do like that. I like the attempt to see if the Cetrion worked. Kind of wish it was pre-reset. But hey, you know, you got to stick with your guns when you can. And only a one game deficit. Not the worst thing in the world. But I like the Scarlet coming back. I kind of like the the instant change back where the Cetrion... That Cetrion would have had to have done some major damage in that first match, I think, for Macaran to be satisfied that it's worth using. Because mm -hmm. the Scarlet was doing fine. Yeah, you didn't win the set, but that was down to a few moments that you yourself should have done differently. Like, obviously, Captain Hindsight, everyone loves him, but in this instance... Oh, God! We have two whiffs. Going back to the Scarlet feels like a good place because it's the comfort zone. A lot was working out. It's just, you know, it didn't quite go your way. So that wasn't mm -hmm. the character's fault. I mean, maybe partially the character's fault because it's Scarlet, but, uh, yeah, I mean, not, hey. not, not down to how yeah, these games yeah, went yeah, lost, yeah, though. I know, like, I know, Any I know, character would have got hit by that. True, true, true. And uh, certainly they did when it was a much higher tier, right? I mean, certainly Macaron got hit in that exact same situation. Uh, but right now, holding on to the lead, obviously there's going to be a little bit of Oki from this grab. You do get Oki off the back throw with Jackie, but oh! 
catches it and we do have the meter this time so that's gonna be almost chipped oh this is really tough this time and nice. yeah, here we go a better option to catch people out of the air caught on the way up and i'm already liking the switch back to scarlet very well it's like we just talked about though chef a lot of the stuff that was hitting the scarlet was hitting the cetrion as well it did not seem like a character thing and mm -hmm. the damage here and the conversions and look at the comfort zone this is macaran's absolute comfort place unfortunately though that overhead scouted out by k-top we've got tons of damage for it nice that looks like a reactionary block on that overhead it seemed like back in the corner you go very good call right there Oh, the full leap. Wow, you can see how patient Macron was. Just like, yeah, no, I'm not going to do anything. You're going to do a full empty leap over me, and uh, I'm not going to care. But oh, there we go. Finally, the flawless block up two working. Took a lot of times for it to finally actually do something. Staying even this round, though. Oh, wow. Expected on there. Grab or something similar. On the way, K-Top. A little bit of a turnaround here. We're able to whiff punish that string and with meter to spend doesn't get the final hit that is unfortunate it likely would have been the end of the round oh, just with the 4-4 that was actually terrifying there's the aa this is yep. enough you think it's enough i think it's enough it's definitely enough it, right it's it's 950 health and it's yeah. scarlet fatal blow i'm confident I don't know why I ever question it. I, I I should never ever question it. That does a chunk. And there we go back to the Scarlet and getting the win immediately. We are keeping things competitive post reset grand finals. I'm glad. I'm glad that this is the way that things are going down between these two players to see who wins this care package for Evo. This is exactly what I want to see. I didn't want to see anybody get swept, you know? That would have felt pretty bad. And they both clearly stand an equal chance of making this happen. As uh, now we're, we're down to basically a two out of three set from here on out. Just one two out of three set, essentially. Easy, mate. Easy. Easy, Easy mate. Win a two out of three... <laughs> Get that trip to Vegas. Have a good time and play some Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Easy peasy. Also, Mortal Kombat 1 playable at EVO, so <laughs> definitely another oh, yeah, reason we want to be there. <laughs> it is, actually. All right. Oh my gosh, this is so tense. Uh, I mean, reset 3-1, we're 1-1 post reset. I mean, the big question I think is we're going to have to ask, is Macron going to regret trying the Cetrion at a point? Because that was a uh, pick that didn't really work out all that well, and it was the first loss given up. So if we do go to a game five, uh, we know that Macron probably is not going to be super happy about that. But if, we, if Macron just keeps playing like they played in the last game, I mean, that is killer, killer, killer. And we might see a Scarlet doing well at Evo. Unfortunately, though, that's going to be K-Top catching a, a bit of early momentum. I say unfortunately just for the Scarlet fans out there. Yeah, yeah. I really am impartial, <laughs> as I do love both of these players. K-Top now with the push forward. The forward throw. Again, like really trying to keep things unpredictable. Forward throw, at the very least, it gave you room to escape the corner. Lovely now. Big jump. Whoa! Ooh, Almost standing. completely jumped in. Hesitation as well. Again, the same thing again. But again, k wins the round. Chef, I'm so confused. I don't know. It's working out. I also got to know, that was standing three from Scarlet. We have not seen Macron use that normal almost ever. Uh, the whip. It's the blood of whip. So weird choice right there. Uh, but just a lot of weird things in that round in general. Oh, an unfortunate drop. Not quite high enough for that down one to work. But oh, the teleport Lovely to read. get the Oki. That was genius knew the break was coming and now so much damage off the back of that neutral jump now macaron 365 just like that pushing forward now lots of chip damage expecting some kind of flawless block actually but we'll call that a happy accident as the short hop 2 did connect all right, this is this is pretty tough for now for Macron. Ooh, great usage of the interactable. That is almost enough to put into chip territory. And yeah, you gotta be super careful. Look at that patience from Macaran, and that's gonna be a chip winning situation. Now we're tied up one to one. That was an amazing usage of the interactable. That turned things from a scary spot to uh, a very hard to lose spot, I think. Anti yeah. Uh, for the teleport as well. Neutral jump. Not scouted out there by K Top this time. I think wants to answer back to some of this stuff, but the thing is, one wrong move, one jump in that hits you, and it's Scarlet damage versus Jackie. 950 health. It, it's a risk, a massive risk. Oh, the jump over whiffs. It's actually pretty good for uh, Macaran. 
Especially just you know, Kithop needs to pull back this lead, like really needs to again. Oh, the break. That's like the third time. Macron's so good at reading that, and that adds to be so much damage. Of course, for anybody doesn't know, that does unscale the damage when you armor break somebody. So all that damage was like basically maximum. And here we go, no defensive bar. Oh no, the drop. Really need to finish that up. Ktop's comeback has definitely all started, but it's gonna be ended as soon as it began. Macaran going up two to one now in this grand finals. Are we going to see a game five? It really depends on whether K Top can slow it down. Because right now, Macaran has been in charge of every situation that we're seeing at the moment. Whether it's the neutral, whether it's answering back on the rushdown, there's a lot of like big jumps and, and big advancements, and K Top is not answering back in any way. And it almost feels like I don't want to. I don't want to speak too heavy in in regards to what he's thinking, but it just looks a bit like he's worried that if he gets it wrong, the damage is going to just murder him, melt the health down, because it's mm -hmm. Scarlet, right? So like, I'm seeing so much hesitation in answering back what Macaran's doing. It's a bit worrying because that means Macaran is in your head. Macaran's in control. Yeah, you, you do not want to let Macaran have con that sort of control of the pace, right? Even just the pace, uh, because then you start running into things. You start trying to make attempts that uh, are already being answered by Macaran preemptively. And of course, the biggest thing is Macaran's getting all that damage. Uh, we talked about that in the noob matchup earlier with Zippery. But the fact that Jackie has to use a lot of defensive bar to do max range jumps means that it opens you up for a ton of damage against characters that normally uh, have to at least make the opponent break away once and cut. look at this right here that is uh i mean obviously it was defensive bar but if you'd used the meter on a jump that would have been huge damage okay top significantly down in life and the two bars of amplify there for macaran it's a chance to take the round just on that alone no defensive bar for k-top so getting hit now is going to be very very scary indeed and it's good defense in these projectiles any of those projectiles connect and it's bad news. Macaran's gonna do damage, it's gonna heal. Not what you want. Now, the advance. An opportunity now for K-Top. Shrapnel blast into nothing. So much respect at the moment. Oh, oh. looking to react to an overhead, I think. But here's one of mine. Oh dear. Oh, oh no! It's enough! It's enough tournament point for Macaran to potentially win the care package to help him go to Evo. This is huge. And the corner positioning on top of all of that. This would be a major, major moment for Macaran, a player who's always had it in him to get that far and to do that well, but and this would be that time to take that step up, I suppose. By no means, the match is not over. K Top oh, looking to answer back. It is certainly not over. Answering back has already happened. K Top, one more round and things get tied up. Macaran, one more round and this is over. Uh, both sitting right center stage. That looked like almost like round start position, <laughs> like game start position, both with full meter, but the first hit going to K Top and a solid hit at that. And uh, trying to read the breakaway right there. There was no breakaway, but you almost don't even care as Jackie. It's like, oh, I lost like 40 damage on my combo. Big deal. It was just basically half life anyway, uh, but a little bit gained back from Macaran just in the hit alone. Yep. Thanks for the heals. And now the side twitching throw that's going to put us back to this mid screen. K-Top being really careful but urgent, you know, looking to block as much as possible. Sadly, that boiling point is going to clip him, but always inching that way closer and closer and closer. Elite, a flawless block to boot. Only one bar available to spend for K-Top though, so it's not going to be as much damage as we're used to seeing. And the Fatal Blow, it is ready. If Macaran can land a Fatal Blow here, the tournament is over. And K-Top oh. absolutely knows it. <laughs> Oh, he knows he can't press anything. He's so worried to press anything right now. This has been a block stream from one side to the other, but now they're both in fatal blow. This is a fatal blow away Look, from it's either. Frozen in the match. That's the there hit. it is. We're going to game five. Oh my gosh, the patience paid off. You said as we started this game, you said we can go to a game five if K Top manages to slow things down. And by God, that was a slow down for sure. Amazing patience from K Top, and we are going to. To a final game to see who's gonna get this evo potential trip 
the sheer transformation of how that match was playing at the end when it was button, 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 button. <laughs> the moment K-Top got Fatal Blow, everything just a halt. A complete halt. Both oh. players having a fast, armoured Fatal Blow transformed the pace. And now one game left. One match and one player for the care package to Evo. Like... This is a stressful match. It is. I mean, stressful for us. I can't imagine how stressful it is for them. Both playing against some of the most stressful players to play against in the scene. But, oh, this between these two. I'm glad it's coming down to this point. I know I keep saying that. I was glad it came out of these two grand finals. I'm just glad that the bracket got reset and it wasn't a sweep. But I'm especially glad that we're going to a final game here. They're both sticking with their guns, the characters that they've been playing the most over the past few years. It just all comes down to who can play better in game five five of grand finals all right first blood no pun intended for macaran is that grab it's its mark we're gonna need a lot more than that on both sides speaking of which one bar two bar two more bar spent on defense as now macaran on the back foot knocks down in the corner no defensive meter this is possibly the worst way the round could have begun here for Macaran, who has a lot of work to fight back. The string far too slow, and now Katop, I do not think expected the side switch, otherwise that would have been a dash punch. Speaking of, elite now, Katop, advancing, match point, tournament point, and Evo trip point for Katop now. And what a dominant round, too. And it's looking to start off the same way as well. K-Top is in the zone. Crushing blow. Everything is going his way. Macron needs to find a way out of the corner. That's a great way to do it. The flawless walk on the down one. Wasn't able to get a pickup, but at least the pressure has turned around a little bit. This is going to be Oki off of the back throw, though. And Macron now down to below half life. K-Top still sitting very healthy. A knockdown. Down one. K-Top. Just has not been getting opened up by basically anything. Oh, oh no, no, that's the game. That's the no! game. And that is going to be K-Top taking the tournament. And the hospitality package for EVO 2023. That, my friend, is all yours. Well done. Very well done. Congratulations, K-Top. It came down to that situation I pointed out earlier in the tournament. It was happening so often. The attempt to flawless block up to, but K-Top didn't throw out a normal. Not only that, landed and blocked the accidental input short hop two, which we saw happen three, I think, other times in this tournament. But this time, K-Top was ready for it. Not only blocking it, but punishing it and getting that exact perfect amount of damage. What a way for that to end. And 100% a read on the habits of Macaran to be able to do that as an empty leap and not actually commit to anything genius stuff. And K-Top, like you mentioned, is going to be getting that care package to potentially go to Evo. Very well earned. I mean, both of these players, I feel like, certainly earned it, but, uh, you know, only one could truly earn it. A great show from both of them, though. It was a wonderful tournament, and that grand finals went as close as you possibly could have asked for, with the exception of a uh, final round both sides. But that was just a testament to K-Top. When the heat was on, right, and it's time to step up again and again and again, K-Top is able to do that. He can constantly, constantly shift gear and start being so much more momentum focused. Let's take a look at this bracket and we'll remind everyone the story of today here for Europe. It's been a long show. It's been a wonderful show. And with the grand finals post reset, K Top, you said it and you reminded me. K Top has mentioned in interviews that going into lower bracket or loser's bracket is a motivator. It's the last chance and it makes K Top often play a lot better. We saw that 1000% today. As now the final game of the tournament, K Top hit that next level. And now, as the champion for the FGC Arcade, road to EVO here for the European portion of MK11, this is a great result for him. Yeah, a very, very well deserved. I think an, uh, a very appropriate and amazing representative for the EU region and, of course, the EU region of the PlayStation tournaments uh, to be able to represent an EVO. Really hope all the travel works out and that we do get to see K Top at EVO. Of course, you know, tons of things can happen, especially when you're coming from far away. But like I said, I hope that all of these players manage to uh, get there at EVO because I'm a big fan of Europe in general. Uh, I. 
I, I think that, I don't know. I, I think, I, I mean, I said it before, but I think I like Europe better. I think I like, I like watching Europe. I think there's a lot of players that, in North America, we get to see some players that we're used to seeing, but in Europe, I just think there's a lot of players that are so, so strong and so talented, and uh, we just don't, unfortunately, get a chance to see them out at a lot of events. So hopefully we do get to see more of them, but at the very minimum, K-Top, we know, has a good chance. It was a really, really good day. And I want to remind everyone actually right now that if you like what you see, you can tune into this exact same place in not too long, actually, because normally there's a bigger gap. But I think we've had a bit of a longer show today. So basically stay tuned and North America will be happening after this. Uh, a couple of things for us to sort of go over as we wrap up the day. Uh, if you want to get involved or just find out what's happening here and how you yourself can play competes.playstation.com that is uh the the main place to get your information from um, a, a lot of people here are going to want to uh, no doubt take part in stuff maybe you play mortal kombat maybe you play other fighting games maybe you play other games a lot of games are featured here on the playstation tournaments system uh, i think additionally to that the last thing to really shout out is the Discord, the official PlayStation Tournaments Discord. You can get involved in a lot of this activity. The information can be found there as well. But also just hanging out with the community, watch parties, and being able to enjoy the content with other people that enjoy PlayStation Tournaments. However, that, for Europe, is all we have time for. So I want to extend a massive thank you to everybody involved to playstation and to the production teams behind the scenes doing a lot of the work here to get the show running uh thank you of course chef for joining me it's always a pleasure um shout outs and congratulations to ktop for the great victory and thank you everyone at home for watching stay tuned north america is going to be after this this is playstation tournaments fgc arcade road to evo for mortal kombat